We're going to call this meeting to order at exactly one o'clock. And the proceedings of this meeting will be recorded and made available on the internet. If we can ask the clerk to conduct the roll, please. Thank you, Mayor Clarkson, are you present? I am. Deputy Mayor Windover? Present. Councillor Armstrong? Present. Councillor Franzen? Present. Councillor Lampet? Present. For staff, we have Donna Taggart, CAO Treasurer? Present. Steve Brockbank, Director of Emergency Services? Present. Ivan Coombs, Director of Public Works? Present. Dylan Kosh, Director of Recreation and Facilities? Present. Um, Adele Arbor, Temporary Manager of Building and Planning. Ann Roof, Deputy Clerk. Present. Lynn Holt, Economic Development Officer. Present. Chelsea Carpenter, Waste Public Works Coordinator. Present. Allison Martin, Planning Administrator. Present. And Jesse Clark, Director of Corporate Services. Clerk is present. Thank you very much. At this time, I want to uh, welcome the council members today and all members of staff. Um, it's nice to it's nice to see everyone here and glad that everyone is well. Uh, we understand that everybody is is um, stressed really to the to the limits, and we certainly appreciate the. Uh, the dedication that is taking place in this office and also uh, to do with our council members. I know we're all receiving calls from people who are concerned about different things going on and and the best that we can do is to is try to calm people. It's nice to see the uh, vaccines finally rolling out a little more consistently but um, I think all of us uh, certainly appreciate the uh, the help that we're getting from, from all, all uh, all, all sections of the of the population. Now, if we could just call for a moment's reflection, please, and think of those people who need some need some help at this time. Okay, thank you. Now, we are very excited to announce the launch of our new municipal and library websites. This has been a long time coming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the new websites have a fresh look and are more accessible and user-friendly. We are very happy with the finished product and thank staff for all their time and effort on this project. Donna, I think you're going to say a few words on this. Yes, thank you and through you. I just want to uh, echo your comments about staff. This has been a major undertaking. Uh, staff have been working on this uh, new website since October of last year. It's taken a lot of staff resources and although I was the lead on this project, I ended up very early on learning that it required a lot of work, a lot more than I had anticipated and expertise that our wonderful staff committed to the project. So I wanted to mention the staff involved. So it's Chastity, Jesse, Lynn, Susan, Bianca, Chelsea, Derek, Stephanie, and Kim at the library. So we're really excited. We think that we've got a really great product and I just wanna thank everyone involved in this project. Well said, I think we echo, I think we echo that. Okay, um, we don't need motions or anything for that, but we do need a motion to approve the agenda. Deputy Mayor Windover and seconded by, uh, I don't see what you're doing down there, Councillor Armstrong. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, all in favor? Thank you. We need to have motions to adopt the minutes of April the 6th Ma and the statutory public meeting of also, yes. We missed an agenda item. Oh, yes. we did? Through you, if we could just go back and remind of the disclosure of pecuniary interest. Yes, we can do that. Uh, this time I'm going to, rec to recommend council members of their obligation to declare any pecuniary interest that they may have either now or any time in the future. Now we can deal with the adoption of the minutes, the regular council meeting of April the 6th, statutory public meeting also of April the 6th, 2021. Motion to adopt, Councillor uh, Lambshead and Councillor Franzen. Uh, all in favor? 
that motion has carried. Minutes and reports from committees and boards. Economic Development Advisory Committee, April the 12th. Library Board, March the 12th. Parks, Recreation and Culture Advisory Committee, special meeting of April the 1st, and the regular meeting of April the 8th. We need a motion to receive these minutes. Uh, <clears throat> Deputy Mayor Windover and Councilor Franzen, all in favor, motion is carried. Liaison reports from council boards and committees. Do we have any uh, person who would like to speak to either the economic development, uh, the PRCAC or the per, uh, police services board or library board? And I'm going to speak very briefly on the police services board. Uh, Donna and I have been part of discussions with the uh, with the OPP concerning the amalgamation of all of our police services boards under under one board. So it looks like, and Donna, you can you can speak to this as well. It looks like this is almost it's a done deal. We have to get back to them for sure. On June the 5th, I'm not clear in, in my own mind as to why it's being done or what our benefit's going to be, but I'm not sure that it's going to be uh, that it's going to be something that we're going to have much say over. I think that the uh, province has pretty much made up their minds, but we still do have some time to comment, but our police services board is going to look very different. So Donna, do you want to just briefly enlarge on that? Um, so through you. Uh, perhaps you are correct, there are changes coming to the police service board in that the lower tier board will no longer exist. It'll be a, a, a higher or a regional board, but if it's okay, perhaps we can speak to this later on the agenda. There is a, a motion on there that we're requesting council adopt to look at extending the deadline. So okay. perhaps I can speak to that later if that's okay. Sure. Thank you. Uh, now, any of the other uh, board representatives here that want to speak to Anything? Yes. Sorry, through you, I, we have a very extensive amount of information on our agenda today, both in parks and recreation and culture, both master plan and work plans, and a, and a delegation from our uh, chair. So I, I think I'll let that speak for itself. Okay. Yes. Thank you, through you, Madam Mayor. Um, just reiterating uh, the, the current status of the libraries um, with the new lockdown order, of course, they are restricted to curbside pickup only. So uh, they continue to flex with the changing restrictions and that's, that's where we're at right now. Good. And I can't, I can't help but encourage council members to uh, bring information forward in places that you've visited, whether it's, you know, right now we're not going to many community events, but now that we are being recorded and whatever, it is an opportunity to, to do more of an outreach to the public than what we've been able to do in past times, so let's keep that in mind when we're out and about. Okay, we're now going to have a presentation from Bob Taylor Vasey, Chair of the Parks, Rec and Culture Advisory Committee, regarding the Parks, Recreation and Cultural Master Plan, as well as Committee's Work Plan. Please unmute your audio and or share your camera and make your presentation. We've set aside 45 minutes for this presentation, and so ask Council that all questions are saved until the end of this presentation. And are we ready to go there? Thank you, Mr. Vasey. So you can see me and you can hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, given the outages these days, if you lose me, I will uh, make every effort to phone in as soon as possible. Uh, oh, thank you, Mayor Clarkson, and, and good afternoon to members of council and the our virtual gallery. Well, at long last, the Parks, Recreation and Culture Advisory Committee is excited to present for Council's consideration of Parks, Recreation and Culture Interim Master Plan. And I would request that you uh, hold your comments and questions until the finish. Uh, my thanks also to Ann Ruth for uh, manning the, the keyboard. And I hope it is not too irritating to hear me say next 59 times. So next. Uh, the purpose of today's review is to obtain endorsement uh, by Council of both a Parks Recreation and Culture Interim Master Plan as well as our 2021 Work Plan. Next. I, wanna, I would like to, to put what we are presenting to you today into context. Uh, master plans are fluid 
documents and, and subject to ongoing review based on new and emerging considerations and priorities. There are far more than documents uh, nicely bound and, and placed on a shelf as a reference tool. They change, it's a natural process. And to use a more common phrase, um, they are organic. So what we are presenting is the first phase of two phases in the development of a master plan 2021 version. The first version is an interim plan because it does not have a recommendation for the future of the Buckhorn Sports Pet. That is currently in the hands of staff. The final version will incorporate that recommendation and we would then look for approval of the final version by council. Next. So the sequence of this presentation is as follows. We want to acknowledge all those who were instrumental in helping us get here. We want to review our uh, parks, recreation and culture vision, our guiding principles and our key objectives, some, uh, but not all, the challenges and opportunities, a very brief overview of our process, uh, show you three clusters of recommendations, and then present each of those recommendations in order. And then uh, where do we go from here? Next. Uh, we had exceptional response to our two surveys from from residents and and comments that were insightful, they were informative, and they were challenging. Um, at the same time, I want to acknowledge the really incredible work ethic of the members of uh, my advisory committee, both present and past. Uh, Bill Kent, uh, Sheila Perry, Marlis Kirkman, Sheila Cook, Bruce Averill, uh, and Lance uh, Coulart. And special mention uh, must go to our two uh, subcommittees, uh, Trails and the Buckman Sports Pad. Uh, we are really indebted to the support of council, and particularly the advice and counsel of councillors Franson and Lambshead, and previous to uh, councillor Franson, councillor Leto. And our municipal staff deserves our unreserved thanks and praise uh, for the time and the thought that they dedicated at every step of this journey. Next. So let's start with aspiration and a sense of purpose. Uh, this vision uh, combines five essential themes, um, connectivity, accessibility, the environment, lifestyle, and inclusivity. Uh, it's broken down into three parts. Uh, what do we want? Where is it going to happen? And who are we doing it for? Everything that we are presenting today had to support this vision. Next. But in addition, we also de developed a set of values against which was measured every component of our work. And I distilled them into four. One, to support healthy lifestyles. Second, ensuring um, that our plans will flourish over the long term. Third, be reflective of what our residents told us. And finally, to practice open and transparent consultation. Uh, I'm sorry, public consultation. Next. We developed a number of key objectives. Um, first, an aspirational and, a, and an achievable vision, uh, a responsiveness to the needs of our residents, whether by type of resident, by location, or by age group, and the maximized use of uh, both municipal buildings and open space areas. Next. And further uh, objectives to strengthen our, some existing partnerships and explore potential future partnerships, to collaborate with other committees and boards uh, of council on common ground, such as economic development, tourism, and heritage, to name just three, and to produce relevant effective promotional and educational tools as part of a municipal communication strategy. Next. It is important to keep in sight both opportunities and potential roadblocks. One, based on available operational funding and trained volunteers. The need to listen to a key message of our residents to address the needs of families, seniors, and youth to attract financial support 
and vibrant uh, volunteers, and finally, to increase uh, levels of awareness of existing facilities and programs. Next. This slide shows the steps we took and where we are today. I'd like to make three points. One, we faced the challenge of COVID. For example, the inability to hold in-person focus groups. Each one of our steps followed a consistent methodology and staff was involved in this process from day one. Next. The next three slides show three different clusters of recommendations. Um, the first cluster is really policy driven and that includes partnerships, volunteers and communications. Next. The second is open spaces, uh, which has three different recommendations about boat launches, trails, parkland and beaches. Next. And finally, uh, facilities and programs addressing recommendations for both sports pads, uh, community halls and heritage. Next. For each recommendation, we will cover five questions in order. What needs to be done? Why it is important to do it? Inherent risks? Who will do the work and anticipated costs? And what PRCAC needs to do next? Next. The first recommendation uh, in, in the first cluster is partnerships. That the municipality develop a comprehensive partnership policy to support the achievement of parks, recreation, and culture priority projects. Next. In Trent Lakes, we have a wealth of expertise and experience and access to further expertise beyond our borders. Uh, this is a list of potential partners and I would like to highlight two. A board of Education, where we have opportunities for curriculum development and higher education institutions such as Trent and Fleming with con the considerable resources they can bring to bear in our, in our aid. Next. It was critical to identify for each recommendation what can limit our chance of success and what we needed to do to mitigate those risks. In this case, we, have, we need to ensure that partnership is based on a, a sense of mutual benefit. In other words, it has it's not just what we want from them, it's what we can give to them and the ability to put together a good working environment. From a resource and financial perspective, from the outset, we need to recognize that there will be incremental staff commitment needed and specific incremental costs for almost all the recommendations. And in this case, they need to engage staff their time and their skills to help manage any partnerships that we create. Next. So as part of our work plan uh, for this year, we will develop a project plan in support of a comprehensive partnership strategic plan. And I will explain how we will develop this project plan and other project plans later in this presentation. Next. The second recommendation, uh, uh, relating to volunteers is that the municipality in its review of volunteer policies consider succession planning, limited resource usage and sustainability to ensure that the municipality of Trent Lakes Parks Recreation and Culture Initiatives are supported by a sustainable volunteer program. Next. We know that we have a robust, if not enviable, volunteer base in Trent Lakes. We need to continue to build it. And where staff needs uh, <laughs> operational support to supplement uh, uh, their, this, that, their efforts uh, with trained volunteers and the assumption that a robust, stable volunteer force is essential for our success. Next. There are two, um, both pretty self-evident, risks associated we will be competing for volunteers with our groups and, and we may have a struggle uh, due to availability. But in our opinion, although both of these risks are extremely important and serious, both can be overcome. Under implications, we know that there may be a need for a, a, a staff volunteer uh, to help manage the, uh, this, excessive, this extensive program and also perhaps an online system that also will help to manage the program. Next. So at the component part of our work plan will be to develop a project plan in support 
of a volunteer strategic plan. Next. The final recommendation in this cluster is communications that the municipality incorporate in its implementation of the letter M consultant communication strategy an objective to effectively and widely communicate information about recreational and cultural facilities, events, and programs. Next. It was very clear from our first survey that there is an underlying need to ensure our residents are informed for example, to create different ways to communicate. Accepting that apathy is not the issue. Being informed is the issue. And Trent Lakes is continually enhancing its communications and we are an important part of that exciting initiative. And I might mention, by the way, as a total uh, sidebar, I think the new website looks unbelievable. Next. In terms of risk, if we do not increase awareness, we would adversely impact uh, the possibility of the success of our initiatives. Uh, this would, of course, involve uh, uh, some staff time in terms of communications. That would be, uh, I assume, the Economic Development and Communications uh, uh, Officer. And there would be incremental cost for publicity, things such as brochures, uh, educational kits, and maps. Next slide. Uh, this is the component plan that we would develop a project plan in support of a, a PRC strategic communications plan. Next. In the second cluster, we start with boat launches. Of all our recommendations, this one is fundamentally utilitarian. Boat launches do not get a lot of space in other municipal plans, hence a specific focus on standards. Next. There is strong concern about the control of invasive species at boat launches. And I will address this again later. There are, are opportunities for sponsorships to underwrite some costs, for example, the cost of interpretive signs or canoe and, and kayak launch. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, lost, my, lost my train of thought here. Uh, where we put Canoes and kites. And also, we recognize three needs for boat launches cottagers with water access only, cottagers unable to launch their watercraft from their property, and visitors drawn to the natural beauty of our lakes and our rivers. Next. The only risk, and it seems minor, is ongoing maintenance of boat launches. Uh, especially if we have any added features, as I suggested, canoe racks and uh, interpretive signs. And again, for this recommendation, there will be incremental growth in staff commitment and some increased operational cost. But at this point, we're not quite exactly sure what that looks like. Next. So the component of this work plan will be to develop a project plan in support of identifying appropriate sites and standards for MTL boat launches. Next. The second one is trails. To develop a municipality of Trent Lakes Trails strategic plan to establish, promote, and manage standards for a network of trails for non-motorized day use outdoor activities. Although no one recommendation was given any preferential treatment, the reality is that trails was the most highly rated activity in both surveys. Trails are also both a very key component of the county's active transportation plan and a practical and fundamental example of environmental stewardship. It also uh, harkens back to what we were told by some of our, our residents that it would be really cool to be able to connect both new trails and existing ones for year round use and the opportunity to use beaches, parks, and playgrounds as nodes at different points in those trails. Next. Trails do not come without risks, including, as an example, potential sites where trails would cross lands in private hands or the crowns. Another risk is to maintain a robust volunteer base, which is specifically the the training and the coordination of volunteers, and the simple fact that the design, the implementation, 
and the management of trails is dependent on available funding and staff support. Next. And to expand on that, we, we would see significant incremental staff involvement. While we recognize a key supplemental role for volunteers, we know that land use improvements, for example, benches, can incur substantial costs. And finally, that producing a comprehensive trails plan may require the engagement of a consultant. Next. So our simple but obviously consistent components to develop a project plan in support of a municipal trails strategic plan. Next. The last uh, recommendation in this cluster is parkland and beaches. Uh, we want to write a parks strategic plan that includes uh, an inventory of potential sites based on an analysis of vacant municipal land and a set of standards for repurposing both existing and developing new parks. Next. We know that there are vacant properties owned by the municipality that could be ideal candidates for new parkland and that there was significant interest in our spring 2020 survey shown by residents for both new park opportunities and the enhancement or the repurposement of existing parks. And finally, as I said just earlier, parks and beaches are a potential nodes on a, a new trail system as destination points. Next. And as I have already mentioned, but it bears repeating, uh, there will be uh, some risk associated with the need for uh, ongoing staff support and uh, the effective use of trained volunteers. And I, I might say, based on talking to others about volunteers, uh, volunteer management is not a quick hit. It takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of discipline. Next. There are some resource and financial implications. Uh, uh, we anticipate that there will not be significant capital expenditures in the near term. An example of such an expenditure would be the seniors exercise area in Fenelon Falls that that uh, came in uh, by grant uh, at, a, at the cool cost of $125,000. We know that land use improvements will probably be the major requirement and also that if any uh, staffing and budgetary adjustments or, or, or plans are, are, are dependent on the design and the implementation of new parks and the repurposing of those that exist. Next, so we will develop a project plan in support of a parks strategic plan. Next, the last category. Uh, the, the first uh, recommendation has to do with the Cavendish Ice Rink. It is to continue the municipal operation of the Cavendish Ice Rink. That's not to say we ever put on the table we wouldn't. It's just that we want to state clearly that we, we, we recommend that the that to council that we continue to operate that um, ice facility. Next, we know that the facility is fully functional. We know that it, it's year round and we, we know that it's multi-purpose use. And we know that the way it's being managed by its volunteers is working. So there's an old expression, if it's broke, not broke, don't fix it. We think the status quo is working and should stay as such. Um, we assess the risks associated with this are low and that any improvements to the rink, uh, for example, structural, um, would, ha would, would follow uh, uh, Municipality of Trent Lake's best practices for asset management. Uh, that improvement might be something to do with the boards or access points up to the rink. Next. There is no component in our work plan because uh, we have a, a basically assigned this to, to be maintained by staff. However, as we develop the first three recommendations on partnerships, volunteers, and communications, we'll be looking for opportunities as we develop those to apply one or more of them to this particular rink. Next, the Buckhorn Sports Pad. Uh, ours is a recommendation uh, that a recommendation will be included in the master plan based on the outcomes of the Municipality of Trent Lakes Municipal Council motion to undertake a study of the current Buckhorn Sports Pad. Next, now I normally never read my slides, but I'm going to read this one because I don't want to miss anything. Council directed staff to undertake a study regarding the long-term viability of the existing Buckhorn Sports Pad. The role of PRCAC is defined uh, by consensus in the committee is to review and comment on the recommendations presented in that study. Any future recommendation to be included in this master plan will be initiated by staff. 
the committee set aside uh, the reference to other options at this point in time, pending the completion of the study, and yet we expect that the group undertaking the study may request access to, to any documents generated by the committee, including the feasibility study undertaken on the option of a new, a new facility and or any data gathered from both PRCAC resident surveys. Next. So we will review as part of our work plan and comment on the recommendations raised and based on the outcomes of the 2021 study of the current Buckhorn Sports Pack. Next. The third um, of, of four recommendations relates to community halls. The Municipality of Trent Lakes partners with the three municipal halls, the Buckhorn Community Centre and the Sports Pad, to create a network of community hubs that includes a long-term strategic plan for programs, partnerships, operational, volunteer and financial sustainability strategies, as well as a central social, cultural and recreational site at the Buckhorn Community Centre. Next. We know we, have, we must do this. It is, it is required to do this, to be collaborative. And I'm going to give you an example. The example is to have in all community halls, the sports pad, the Buckhorn Community Center and elsewhere, a coordinated set and series of heritage events across the municipality on Heritage Week. That's a good example of, 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 of how collaboration will, is so important to our success. If there's duplication of efforts at any point, then we will uh, uh, ensure that we reduce that. And we also want to build both improved services for residents in the halls and also support the priorities for economic development that are currently under review by our sister committee, the Economic Development Advisory Committee. Next. There is a risk uh, to sustain the current volunteer base that now manages the three uh, municipal halls. Uh, the concept of long-term financial sustainability, which, as I said earlier, is one of our guiding principles, and also to clearly clarify the, the roles and responsibilities for those, uh, for volunteers at halls, uh, at, at the BCC, the sports pad, and on any open space area versus those that are assigned by municipal policy to staff. Next. We see an opportunity perhaps for a, a different, maybe enhanced grant opportunities uh, for the halls from the, from the municipality. We, 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 we know that it may be that we may require further consulting advice to take this to conclusion. Based on the experience of other hubs, especially in Peterborough and in Scarborough, we know that we may be entertaining a substantial fundraising campaign. And we also know that if there are any programs developed that would be cross hall and therefore may become a municipal program that there'll be staff time required to plan, develop, and manage those programs. And finally, that this initiative needs to be seen as a three to five year project. Next. So our project plan will be in support of a network of community hubs. Next, the final is heritage, but this is not a case of last but not least. This is, we want to develop a municipality-wide heritage plan the municipality of Trent Lakes is aligned with provincial directives and includes an inventory of historically designated property, enhanced policies, archival records, and educational tools to promote heritage preservation and conservation. Next. Based on some current trends in heritage conservation, basically identified at two levels, at the provincial level by the Ontario Heritage Trust and the other groups such as the Kawartha Land Trust, or at the national level by the National Trust or the Nature Conservancy of Canada, built heritage, cultural heritage, and natural resources heritage are all in need of urgent attention. Next. There are two risks. Uh, the, the, the first risk, this area, the area of historically designated properties is highly regulated by legislation. Fortunately, to mitigate this risk, Trent Lakes has on its staff someone who has navigated this in the past very successfully. The other three risks are serious. There are risks if we don't do this. If we don't do something, if we don't have a heritage plan, we face the loss of more and more historical documents, our archival heritage, our municipal memory. 
We, we also uh, face the potential loss of heritage buildings that can be taken down with no recourse um, in, 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 and, and to be developed or whatever would happen to it, but we would lose our heritage. And finally, although through heritage, we can promote Trent Lakes as a tourist destination point. This is another area of overlap with our colleagues on EDAC. Next. There are implications, there are increased a workload for staff, particularly to help us navigate the, the complexities of compliance with provincial legislation and directive, and also costs associated with what we want to do. For example, the design and the management of a heritage register, heritage plaques, mounting displays, and creating educational tools. Next slide. So, our work plan components to develop a project plan in support of a municipal heritage plan. Next. So where do we go from here? Well, first of all, we need endorsement of this interim master plan and by extension, our 2021 work plan. Noting that our recommended activities are aligned with both the strategic priorities of council and our vision that we need to provide council with a set of project plans for council to review and direct and give direction to staff or us to start committee work on this now and to recognize that our work plan is based on the recommendations that I have just reviewed. Next. The next step is to develop a set of, of, uh, of, of project plans for each uh, recommended plan. We have an ambitious list of plans. The project plans will identify what it will take to build each plan, beginning with the scope of work, with base assumptions, the components of the plan, what the outcomes of the plan, who's going to do it, and what the activities are to get the job done. Next. We will then develop those project plans in consultation and collaboration with staff. Before I move on to the next two bullets, I would like to broach the topic of priorities. At this point, we have not set any priorities. That will happen after the completion of our project plans. And I will give you three scenarios that would impact any prioritization. The quality and the life of our water may see significant and uncompromising consequences through the entry of invasive species into our lakes and rivers. This is not directly related to parks, recreation, and culture, but one access point into the water is municipal boat launchers. So the development of all standards is imperative and a potentially high priority. The recommendations of the Buckhorn Sports Pad may result in a significant capital project competing against an already scheduled series of facility capital improvements. And finally, trails, clearly the number one favorite of residents. But if we require consultant, it becomes more complex, including substantial allocation of staff time and significant out-of-pocket costs. Our project plans will help us to determine the immediate, the medium, and the long-term priorities. We will present these project plans to council, for council to either direct to staff to implement or to, or to come back with further reporting, or to direct uh, the advisory committee to undertake some specific work. And I would anticipate that those project plans will be completed no later than the end of July. I would like to say earlier, but every volunteer on this committee is involved in more than one volunteer organization. Uh, I can only ask for so much of their time. And then we will we will review uh, on a quarterly basis uh, where we are to council. So I would like to uh, thank uh, council and our, uh, and our gallery for your patience in this presentation. Um, I now, conclude this part of my presentation and I would uh, welcome um, any questions or comments and I'll do my best to uh, answer any of them. Thank you. Well, thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much. And am I, um, okay. uh, questions from the gallery? Councillor Armstrong. <laughs> thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I've got four points, so if anybody else has a, a comment they'd like to make, please go ahead. 
Okay. All right. So uh, the first one is a comment. Um, I just wanted to thank all members of the committee and the subcommittees for an enormous amount of work. It's very thoughtful. It's very strategic. It's very comprehensive. Um, and, and I think it really does capture uh, the essence of what this municipality can look forward to in terms of its facilities and assets and programs. So a big thanks there. Um, the second one is a question, and you've partially answered it, but I will raise it again. Um, and I know you uh, discussed this and uh, went back and forth on it, um, but perhaps you could share a little bit why the recommendations weren't prioritized particularly given that there was some clear directional uh, input from the first survey on which areas were most important, which they would use more, and which they were prepared to allocate uh, uh, public funds to, uh, to invest in those. Do you want to ask um, all of that? I, I, no? I mean, it's a... It, it's a it's a it's a quite reasonable question, uh, Councilor Armstrong. I it, it is true that we were given a, a sense of direction in the first survey. It, it, it's also true that we were given a sense of direction in the second survey. Um, but it's one um, it's one thing to, for example, to say um, it's very clear um, directionally that everybody wants trails. Um, but there is a reality, and that is. Uh, we need to be very careful on how we assess our priorities because the the major impact on anything we want to do is on staff. So uh, I felt uh, as the chair of the committee, and uh, I had some you know consensus from the committee that that until we knew what it was going to take to develop a plan, we would wait to set priorities. But once the project plans are set, we know exactly what work has to be done, who's going to do it what uh, the components are, and then I think we can sit down with, in fact, more data and more facts, because we only get one shot at prioritization, and, and we want to do it properly, and I didn't feel personally that we are at that point where we could do it. So that, I think that's my, that would be my response to that. I, I'm not trying to wuss out on this. I, I just think that we have observed a very methodical process, and I want to continue to do that until we get to the end. Great. Good. Thank you. Um, and through you, Madam Mayor, uh, third uh, is also a question. Within each of the recommendations, which are very broad and very strategic, um, were the subcommittees or the committee able to identify any um, short-term initiatives that could be implemented with minimal resources, uh, but would deliver some tangible results in the near term? and have a positive impact for residents. And I'll give you two examples. Um, one would be boat launches. Uh, perhaps we can't do all of the things you talked about, but in the short term, uh, each one could be assessed as to its, its status and whatever remedial things needed to be done. And signage could be uh, added and that could be done this summer. And then the additional work could be done later on. So kind of looking for some, any things that could produce tangible results so that by the end of this year, our residents will say, aha, you know, I know they're working on a longer term strategic approach, but I see some progress. There's this and there's that. The other example I would give is Detman Park, which to my knowledge is the only trail on municipal property um, where we could sign it, we could map it, we could uh, post it and we could promote it. And so that would be, you know, something out there that residents could take advantage of and utilize and see uh, in the short term. Uh, well, you asked two questions. Uh, once again, uh, through the mirror to you, uh, Councilor Armstrong, uh, but I would expect uh, penetrating questions that require good answers. Um, the answer to the first question about quick hits, um, I. I, I take a very fundamental position in this. Until we know where we're going, it doesn't make any sense to, to just do things uh, off the top. Uh, we need, it, we, I think that the project plans we're going to develop, especially, uh, for example, uh, ones like, like trails, may identify that one thing to, to, to come up with is 
quick heads. But we haven't addressed that. And the, with the question, did this come out of the subcommittee? Uh, it was not, uh, neither of those uh, were situations that were brought to the uh, advisory committee. So my uh, the, the position on this is, I don't want to do things because they look good optically. I want to do things because they fit within a longer term plan. And I also need to identify that all these quick hits require staff to do some work. And I and, and we have enough, uh, we have a huge respect for the capacity of staff and, uh, and, and and not for us to say, here's what we want to do. And then staff be directed to do something that at this point they may not have the capacity to, to do. So that would be my answer to those two questions. Perfect. And thank you for you, Madam Mayor. Last one. Okay. <laughs> um, this is a bit of a suggestion, but I mean, I'm, I'm pleased to see that the committee has handed off the first three recommendations to staff because policy and governance are really within their mandate and jurisdiction. They've got the knowledge and understanding of the legal and political and policy and insurance environment to be able to craft policy. And that was with volunteers, partnerships, and communications. So I, I was pleased to see that. I really wonder and question whether the first three elements of the work plan should in fact be separate um, initiatives. So for me, it seems that each of the last initiatives, let's say trails or community halls, their requirements for volunteers are gonna be very different different skill sets, different interests, different management. Um, their requirements for partnerships are totally different. Um, and the information that they will want to communicate through the municipal platforms will also be very different. So I just question whether those should not be incorporated into each of recommendations four to nine and not be a separate project plan. Because once you do that, then you're going to have to address the different types of volunteers, um, the different interest groups, the different partnerships, the different communications. And it looks like there'll be an awful lot of overlap. So that was just what, what struck me. And it would also um, narrow down the number of focus areas in which the committee or subcommittees will be preparing project plans. So I throw that out, one, to make the work a little bit easier, and two, because it just makes sense to me to have volunteers, partnerships, and communications as part of each initiative, be it trails, boat launches, heritage, community halls, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And I, I don't know that, I, I don't expect an answer right now because I'm kind of throwing that out, um, but, but I do, uh, yeah, I do want to raise that and have it considered. Okay. No, I do have an answer for you. Uh, <clears throat> originally, we had taken on the responsibility for developing these three plans. Um, when we first became involved with uh, um, with the really uh, proactive work of, of the CAO in developing a volunteer management plan, it became very clear that um, we could not, um, to develop a communications plan, for example, that would be all-encompassing, would require to have done everything first. Uh, and so we took the, a different position. And I'm going to use um, volunteers as an example. It is true that volunteers, we are required for you know, conservation management of a park versus volunteers that might help to dress and, and, uh, and, and take care of trails or our volunteers in community halls. Uh, we know that for each of our plans, the call for volunteers, for partnerships, and for communication tools will be different. That's not what this is saying. These three recommendations are not saying we're gonna do all that. With volunteers, we're saying, in terms of uh, volunteer management, what is it that uh, volunteers uh, are allowed to do? And what is it that volunteers do under the, under the guidance of staff? For example, if we want to train volunteers, the training in risk management or the, uh, the any training that helps us comply with our in insurance, potential insurance issues must be done by staff. So 
And once we know how volunteers will work, then we can make sure that when volunteers are developed or the base for each recommendation, they know the framework that's in which they can operate. And the same thing applies to, uh, uh, to partnerships and the same thing to communications. Partnerships and volunteers and communication are a corporate municipal responsibility. Our job is to make sure that as we develop our plans, we, we work within the confines of the policy that we have at the municipal level. Does that answer your question? <laughs> Thank you. I, I think that it does, although it's, it's still very narrow in the sense that you're not going to address the volunteer requirements for the Good Bye Room and the Heritage Society and you know, Outreach Center and Community Care. So this municipality has a very large set of volunteers. And if we're developing standards or requirements for only those that we're going to recruit for trails or whatever, that doesn't make sense to me either. So that, that's why I, I really believe those should be specific to the individual initiatives. Um, well, so I'd, I'd ask you to back and consider that. Um, I, 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 Councilor Armstrong, I, I think that's what I, I, I think that's what I said. Anything with the Goodwill Room or anything, that will all be part and parcel of developing, for example, the Heritage Plan or our, our Community Health Plan. These recommendations aren't, a, aren't about specific volunteer needs. They're about the umbrella of what, what protocol we have to observe when we use volunteers. The, the, the trails can come back, come back with all number of volunteers. But then we say, so if, if we want them, how does that fit into what we know they can do, for example, without incurring risks and insurance liabilities? That's the, that's what that's the bigger picture. So no, we're not saying that we're not going to address specific needs of volunteers, partnerships, and communication. That's the point of the project to identify what we need to do. Okay, last comment and then, then I'll leave it, but um, I think it's well outside the mandate of the committee to be addressing volunteer needs for the Goodbye Room or the Heritage Society or the Outreach Center or Community Care. So that's why I think the focus should be narrowed down to just those areas of recommendations that the committee is putting forward. Okay, okay I'll rest it there. Thank, Thank you. you for that. Mm -hmm. um, anyone else? Ron, have you got a comment? <clears throat> no, just a, a lot of time involved in this. That's yeah, appreciate it. Jerry. Peter. Peter. Yeah, I I too wanted to uh, to thank Bob for all his work he did and uh, how he led our committee with a fair and balanced approach. And I think that was very important that we dealt with just the facts. Okay, that's all I have as a comment. Um, I would like to make a motion to endorse this plan. Uh, but not yet. Uh, Terry? Yeah, I, I just have a comment that this whole plan is going to involve many different aspects of volunteerism, staff time, e everybody needs to be involved. So I think we need, when we're moving forward, to have plans in place as to what we're going to be able to do with specific types and numbers of volunteers and staff. So I think making a plan for each item and then realizing what sort of support you're going to need for that plan is a good way to go. And I think that's the, the general sense of what we're doing here. Okay. And I have, um, I have several comments. Uh, one thing that I would like to comment, first of all, is this is a township of volunteers, always has been. And if we treat, uh, treat them properly, uh, always will be. There isn't any shortage of volunteers out there as long as they feel respected. As far as the training is concerned, my husband's just gone through training for um, delivering groceries for community care. That training is pretty much universal. Anybody that takes that training is pretty much, uh, when he finished, he said, you know, this, this could be used anywhere. So I think as far as the training is concerned, I think once, once you go through that training, any volunteer position that comes up is probably going to be covered by that. Um, a big concern I have is the development of parks, and not that I am opposed to parks, but I am opposed to um, a park that is created with the the, um, the necessary infrastructure, and I'm speaking specifically on parking. 
because we've got a couple of parks in this uh, in this township now that are extremely problematic to everybody that's around them. You get the uh, you get the park, the Chase Park, for instance, with six parking spaces. I'm called on a regular basis about people that can't get out of their own driveways. So it's not like a park that's uh, on the outside of Lakefield or the outside of Peterborough, where you can take public transport to get to them. People drive to these parks. So for every person who comes to the park, they're gonna come with a car. So it's a huge, it's a huge um, component to having a successful park. Boat launches, um, great idea, but we all know based on committees that we've got set up at the county trying to deal with uh, uh, unwanted um, garbage and, uh, and human waste, that anywhere that the public can gather right now is extremely problematic. So porta potties are a good idea, but they've got to be managed three or four times a day. That is just unrealistic to having that happen. So we're a very changing culture. That's not a comment that I would have had to have made 10 years ago, but is very pertinent to every place right now that we have public access. It has to be, it has to be considered. Um, I'm very concerned about the, um, the protocol that was used for the survey because the percentages were low. And when we had the percentage, when we had the survey from the public school, which was almost 100% in favor of the sports pad, and then we had the one that was done at the sports pad, your committee deemed that they were not pertinent. I beg to differ with that. I also beg to differ with the fact that parks and whatever are in a priority over the sports pad, primarily because the sports pad is owned by the municipality. And as such, is no different than a roads depot, a library, or anybody else. As it fails, the municipality has the responsibility to keep it in operational condition, whether that is artificial ice, whether it happens to be in that location or where it is, it is, it's an obligation because it belongs to the municipality. It does not belong to the Buckhorn Sports Pad. Um, I think that's, I think that's the three comments that I had. And I don't expect you to comment on, on all of those at all. It's just, these are things that, that um, when I was going through this report that, um, came to uh, came to uh, attention oh well through you uh, madam mayor I, I i am prepared to to respond quickly because i know you have a weighty agenda um i i i i, I take your comments uh, uh with a with a, uh, a lot of thanks i i i agree with you that that it's one thing to to uh, suggest that that to be nice to have new parks uh, there's an absolutely phenomenal piece of land up off White Valley Road. It's 100 acres, but there's no parking, and I don't think that it's re reasonable or be efficient to 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 create a park where we couldn't have parking. And parking, as you know, is expensive, and it is detrimental to the environment because all kinds of trees come down. So I, it's a very important consideration that as we develop a park plan, we may very well come to the conclusion that we will only upgrade existing parks. Uh, and not address new parks, and that's was a really good driving case for it. I agree with you 100% on boat launches. Uh, I, the, the, the idea of having porta potties um, at a boat launch, or the problem for people, I mean, we have seen uh, up and down Mississauga Dam Road, uh, people that come in and the sides of that road are littered with garbage. It's a real problem. So we don't want to uh, to open up things that would invite uh, this kind of a disastrous treatment. Uh, one of the advantages to most of our boat launches, there are 13 of them, is a lot of them are, are they're, like they're very remote. Uh, it, it's kind of hard to find them. Uh, if anyone can find White Beach Road without a GPS, I, 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 I take my hat off to them. So I agree that when we develop standards for boat launches, we have to be very careful that we don't that we had the right standards and and not something we think is nice but is actually going to end with real damage and, and i and I, so I agree with you entirely with the surveys um we can uh, we can agree to disagree about the first two surveys um 
but I, I, I do disagree that parks is being given a priority over uh, the sports pad. Uh, mm -hmm. In my opinion, uh, there is very strong, there is very strong support, extremely strong support, in fact, on the committee to, to, to try to make that existing facility work. Um, and if, if, it, if, the, if the, the study is done, the recommendation is it is viable, and here's what it's going to take, then let's make it happen. Um, and if that and if that becomes to Carol's question, a Council Armstrong question, if that becomes one of our two immediate priorities, that's what's going to happen. So I, 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 I really I, I appreciate your comments and the volunteers one absolutely. If if you don't treat one of the most important aspects of volunteer management is recognition. So if we're going to develop a plan, we have to identify all aspects of management so that we do treat our volunteers with respect uh, and dignity. Um, so I, uh, I, those were four really very uh, uh, insightful comments and I thank you very much. And I know all my committees on the line. Um, and so when we get to get back together at our next uh, meeting, we will, we will talk about these. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, have we another, any other comments? If not, we thank you. And I'm wondering if we want um, if we want to endorse this at this point, or if we want to have um, the committee come back with specific uh, programs or or suggestions for us so we can deal one at a time. I don't think we want to do this carte blanche, but or if we want to do um, if we want to approve it in principle which then gives gives mobility. I'd like direction on that, please. Uh, I'd like to make a motion and support. But are you going to support the entire thing or support Yes, it? I am. Okay. Yes, I am. I find it very comprehensive. Do we have a seconder? Do you want to comment, Terry? No, no I'll second that motion because I, I know that we're going to move forward to make plans for each initiative. So I, I don't think we're saying that, yes, this is exactly what we're going to do. We're only saying that we are going to move forward now with plans to, to figure out what is the best strategic method to move forward with each one of the items on our agenda. So I will second the motion. Okay. Uh, anybody else comment? Do you want to speak to the motion, anyone? Peter has his... Uh, I, I'd, I'd like to request a recorded vote. Okay, Jesse. Are you ready for the vote? Um, I would I would like to speak to that motion, but maybe it's too late. And I would like to say that we I would I'm in favor of, of the uh, the motion in principle, but I feel that just to to do the whole thing, I think it's I think right now for what we know, I think it's too broad. So I will not be. Uh, I wouldn't. Uh, okay, go ahead. I, I'd like to make a comment, please, the Mayor. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, this is a living document. It's going to be reviewed, ongoing review, and whatever changes have to be made, changes will be made. Okay, that's valid. Um, Terry, you okay with that then? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think this is a very good start to go down the road that we need to go. No, that was a that was a good comment, uh, uh, Peter. Okay. Okay, so we'll start with the member who requested the recorded vote and continue alphabetically by surname. So we'll start with Councillor Franzen. Support. Councillor Lambshead. Yes, I support. Deputy Mayor Windover. Yes. Councillor Armstrong. Yes. And Mayor Clarkson. Yes. <clears throat> okay, thank you very much for your time. And uh, Jesse. Through you, you. Uh, Mayor Clarkson, the um, motion or the resolution passed um, was to support the master plan. I just wondered if Council also wanted to do anything with the work plan as um, uh, Bob has presented both of those items. So they're not treated under one motion? Through you, the, the resolution that was passed was to support the master plan. Okay. Councillor Armstrong? Yeah, I would then make a motion to support the work plan, but 
request that the committee consider folding the first three into the others. Not a, not a demand, but just a request that it be considered. Anybody care to, to second that motion? I will. I'll second I think that motion. Oh. Okay. Um, do you want to, anybody want to record it on that or is that okay? That's fine. Are you are you speaking to this, Peter? Do I see your light? No, I, I. Go ahead. Oops. I, I just commented that that was fine with me. Okay. I agree. I agree. Okay. All in favor of that motion? And that motion is carried. Thank you very much, everyone. And thanks again Thank for your you. presentation. And you'll now be removed, but you're welcome to listen to the remainder of the meeting. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, now we have a meeting to go into the statutory uh, public meeting pursuant of the Planning Act, but we don't have one. Business arising from the statutory public meeting, we don't have any. Now we're going to have a presentation from Rhonda Keenan, President and the CEO of Peterborough and the Kawartha's Economic Development, PKED, regarding an economic development update. Please unmute your audio and or share your camera and make your presentation. You will have 20 minutes and I'll ask council that all questions are saved until the end of the presentation. And I'm hoping that economic development is also on here. They were invited to uh, participate in this, uh, in this presentation because uh, uh, everything that Rhonda has to uh, speak to certainly uh, is an economic development uh, program. So thank you, Rhonda. I expect to see you down our way for coffee one of these days, if it ever happens again. I can't wait until that happens. So so thank you, Mayor Clarkson and, and uh, members of Trent Lake Council. Thank you for the invitation to come and speak to you today about economic development. What I was planning on speaking about was economic development, some of the impacts that we've been seeing from COVID-19, um, some of our priorities and challenges for the year, but because of this community, I wanted to do a special focus on tourism and small business. I'm hoping that will meet your needs, but I do want to start off with a congratulations on the launch of the new website, having two of them. I know how much uh, how much work goes into that, so congratulations. Um, next slide. Well, I always like to start with what is economic development because I think everyone has their own definition of what economic development is and every community has um, their own version of, of economic development activities. And so we have economic development officers at the municipal level, at the regional level, provincial and federal. And they all really have the same goal and that's to make each community at whatever level they are more competitive and more resilient for businesses to be able to grow and thrive. And so every community needs economic developers because every community is unique with its own set of strengths and challenges to overcome. And so despite the range in, in definitions, um, at the end of the day, economic development is really about doing four things. The first is taking good care of our existing businesses, and that's encouraging them to stay here and grow. The other is to help new businesses to get started, launch new businesses. The third is attracting new businesses to, to land in this region. And then the fourth is to bring in outside money to be spent here. And that really is what we're talking about when we talk about tourism. So we do all of those things at Peterborough and the Corthas Economic Development every day. And it's my goal to position Peterborough and the Corthas as a great place to do business. Better than our competitors, um, communities like Guelph, Prince Edward County, Kingston, but anywhere else in the world too. It's our job to promote the things that are working well and tell the world how great we are. But then it's also equally important for us to be realistic behind the scenes, identify what isn't working so well, and then work with partners to try to resolve some of those blockages and, and barriers. And, and in order to do that, it's, it's important for us as to be a partner. And we need to work with businesses. We need to work with politicians. We need to work with municipal staff. We need to work with our partner agencies to make sure that we're all rowing in the same direction. The next slide. So impacts from COVID-19, I feel that every business and person, um, I think around the world has got whiplash from the amount of changes that we've been trying to experience and manage and get through uh, with COVID-19. Um, many of the challenges that we identified were likely already there and in place. They just weren't as apparent. And so COVID has certainly lifted the curtain a little and shone a spotlight on some of the things that are not working as well um, in our communities and, and for our businesses. But we do have to say they're really unprecedented times. 
the impacts of COVID-19 are going to be felt through the entire region, through the majority of 2021 and likely beyond. Um, we know that uh, 2021 is going to be another tough year. We were really hoping, I think, when January turned the calendar that uh, we were going to see an end in sight. I know that um, everyone is, is wishing for a safe return to business visitation and, and starting to enjoy life again. Um, and as vaccine rollouts um, continue to happen, I think we, we will be in a better place. Um, but there's still, it's going to be a tough season, I think, ahead of us. Again, as your economic development agency, uh, we do more than just promote this destination to visitors. We also have business advisory services um, that are dedicated to helping businesses and uh, they really do need help this year. So we help with marketing, we help businesses with business plans and it doesn't just have to be a brand new business. It's really important for, for businesses, they may have hit a plateau. How do we help them grow and expand beyond that plateau? and find new ways to attract new clients. And I think this year and last year has been uh, one of those ways. How are we attracting new clients to this region? So what we do know is that businesses are not operating the same way as they did before COVID-19. Businesses do need adjustment strategies if they wanna to continue to perform well, and we're here to try to help them do that. Next slide. So a little bit back in time in January 2020 when it began, uh, we were going to start our new future ready economic development strategy and we really had forecast at that time that our biggest challenge was going to be growth um, coming from the GTA and Durham region. And then COVID happened and everything changed on, on, on its head. And so I was very grateful for the mayor of Peterborough and the warden of, of the county of Peterborough to pull together the mayor and warden's economic recovery task force. And what we wanted to hear from was from every sector of business. Um, from agriculture to manufacturing to retail in the city downtown to retail in a county downtown. Um, we, had, we heard from arts and culture, we heard from the not-for-profit sector, we heard from restaurants um, across this region to try to find out what is happening on the ground and, and how our business is managing. We routinely, we, we heard from about 40 people on each of our calls. It was overwhelming, I can say the, the least. Um, and they were hard calls to get through as businesses were, were talking about all of the challenges that they were facing. Um, what we did is we started to track the challenges. We identified over 50 of them. Um, but as we started to look at what those 50 challenges were, most of them were being addressed through the provincial and federal programs. Many of them were. Um, but as time went on and we really started to dive into what the specific challenges were, we realized that there were some themes that were emerging that were specific to the Peterborough um, city and county region. And so those were the ones that are now hurting our competitive advantage. And so that's the, that's where I wanted to dig in. And those were workforce available jobs, available land and buildings and broadband. And that those are the things that we're focusing on. So the next slide. So at the very high level with workforce, it's really unusual that we have a community that has high unemployment. We have the lowest participation rate in the province. And yet we have hundreds of businesses that are hiring. And so we're, it's very clear that, that a critical skills gap is existing in this, in this region that we need to address. And so what we're finding is that businesses in all areas of the region are wanting and clamoring for people with skills, technical skills, as well as customer service skills, those soft skills that are in very much high demand. And so we're working with Junior Achievement, with the school boards, with Workforce Development Board, Fleming and Trent, to try to address these skill shortages and support our business needs for talent. Next slide. Available land and, and buildings. Um, it's no secret that we are tight for new development and new investment in this region. And although it's not specific to tourism, this is an area that PKD does need to address in order to grow our local and regional economy. Next slide. And broadband, I choose this, this photo intentionally because this is how I always visualize our broadband calls. Um, they're jammed. Uh, we have a lot of users trying to jam in into, um, in, into the Wi-Fi. Um, and so I think with remote working, we recognize how important broadband is to our community, how important it is to keep businesses going, how important it is to municipal services to keep them going. And so um, this is something that uh, is, is required. A lot of work has been undertaken through the Eastern Ontario Regional Network um, to improve broadband capacity throughout Eastern Ontario, um, and we'll continue to support them. What we ask for is, is often when we're meeting with our businesses and they're talking and giving examples of the challenges they're facing with broadband, we elevate that up to, to EORN, and then EORN is able to use some of those anecdotal stories um, to help elevate and explain some of the challenges. Um, we know that we're a desired community, 
And if we did have the high speed gigabit broadband, um, that we would be able to attract more remote workers to the region. And we find ourselves as economic developers in a bit of a state of change where normally we have spent most of our time trying to convince businesses to relocate to this region. And I think with remote working, we're now changing that we're actually asking families and, and individuals, uh, we're trying to attract them to move to this region and they can work um, from anywhere. Next slide. Specifically to tourism, um, we are, as your economic development agency, also tasked with destination marketing. We are your destination marketing organization, or DMO, and it's our job to attract more visitors to the region. And so we don't advertise individual businesses, and this is where I think it gets a little bit tricky. We are here to sell the place. And so when you think about other tourism destinations, and if you think about the Poconos, the Bahamas, the Thousand Islands, the Florida Keys. Um, that is our role, that we're trying here to position Peterborough and the Kawarthas um, as a place to visit. And so we are competing daily for those same visitors and their hard-earned vacation dollars. And it's important to recognize how we measure up to our competition and always trying to stay ahead of them and, and offering new and exciting experiences for people to, to come to this region and, and explore. And so while we have them here, we are always looking at getting them to stay here longer and uh, spend more money while they're here. We know that we routinely see about 3 million visitors annually to this region in a non-COVID year. Um, but uh, when they are here, they typically spend about $300 million. So breaking that down, that's really only $100 uh, per person while they're here. And uh, certainly I'm greedy and I would like to see that uh, a little bit higher. And so as the Economic Development Agency, we're trying to build programs um, and working with businesses to find ways to encourage visitors to spend more in this region. So it was really um, interesting to listen to your master plan, your, your Parks, Recreation and Culture Master Plan, because there's certainly a lot of synergies for us to be able to work together to grow on that. So, so I appreciate that connection and that information. Uh, the next slide. One of the ways that we have discovered um, that we can um, get visitors to spend more money and, and to stay longer is to look at our other shoulder, our winter and shoulder season. We know that in summertime we're full um, and we can't really afford to add too many more people even if we did want to. So we need to encourage visitors to come and visit us in all of our seasons um, and spread that visitation throughout the whole year. And so there's a great number of examples on, on how we can enjoy the great outdoors and through all seasons. And again, your trails are an excellent example. Next slide. And Culinary is one of the biggest ways that we think we can do that. So in, in um, only next to accommodation, uh, the next biggest expenditure that our visitors spend on is culinary, uh, food and beverage. And so, and we also know that they need it all year. Um, everyone needs to eat and drink when they're, when they're visiting. So in 2020, uh, we were very proud to be selected as one of only four destinations from across the country to work with the Culinary Tourism Alliance and the Tourism Industry Association of Canada on a national project called Elevating Canadian Experiences. So it's, it's good for us to know that we are a well-respected destination at both the provincial and the federal levels. And so we really wanted to work on this pilot project. And what we received was a three-year strategy to help build on culinary tourism offerings. And, and what that means is how are we adding a culinary component to all of our good tourism projects? One of the challenges that we have as, as a region is that we sell nature and often nature doesn't come with a cover charge. And so how are we having people come here for nature, but then spend their dollars and, and leverage those, those assets? So of course the Trent Severn Waterway is an excellent um, example that people are paddling, they're traveling, they're boating through the Trent Severn Waterway. It's important for us to try to find ways for them and encourage them to get off of the waterway, spend some money in our communities along the way. Mm -hmm. Next slide. And so one of them is cycling, and uh, we've had a lot of success with cycling, um, and, and it's important that we continue to become um, and be a bike-friendly community. We know cyclists love this region, and um, when I was talking earlier about who spends the most money, if this is the group, um, they typically spend about $300 um, and up um, on their average visit. Um, they are big spenders, and they plan their destination and their tours. Um, to embrace the entire community, stopping along the way and taking samples of the food and beverage. 
And so we work closely and, and how we work um, to, to entice more cyclists here, we work closely with cycling magazines. Um, we host cycling influencers in the community. We have them ride our trails. We host them overnight, of course, in non-COVID times. Um, and then they write about us and their experiences while they're cycling here in the region. It works better um, than just taking out an advertisement in the cycling magazine. Um, and uh, we also, of course, because everyone else has switched to digital as well, that we also post our information on cycling apps that are available. And so one of the things that I wanted to, to, to let you know is that we are hosting an Ontario by Bike webinar. Uh, I believe it's tomorrow at uh, 10 to 11 in the morning. And they're talking about the importance of being a bike friendly community and what that means to be bike bike friendly and what steps you need to take to make sure that cyclists feel safe, they feel supported, that they have all of the, the, the needs met uh, when they are in a community. And next slide. And I think it's also important for us to talk about small business support. Um, this region has um, most of our economy is built on small business. And so we are also one of the small business enterprise centers in deliver provincial programming throughout the province. And so often, again, I, I mentioned this earlier, that we do think of our center only supporting new startups, but existing businesses do require support too. And I think, again, the two business segments that often aren't considered businesses um, in the region are tourism and agriculture. And, and I, I'm trying to encourage them to say, we still need business plans and we still wanna help you develop and how can you grow and expand and, and reach bigger target audiences for, for your business. Um, and so what we've done is, we are making sure um, that our tourism operators, that they know about this area, that they're registering their business with us. So we know a little bit more about their business. So when we are taking calls from, from visitors wanting to know what they can do in the region, because they're always calling looking for customized itinerary, the more information we know about our tourism um, businesses, the better we can help them plan their, their adventure when they're here. We have um, so many different features. Uh, we have live chats, we have our website, we have e-learning courses for small businesses. Um, we can take courses at your time and at your um, convenience. We know workshops were difficult because some people are currently with COVID, you're trying to work a job, you're trying to do homeschooling with your children, um, grandchildren. Um, there's a number of things that are going on at the same time. So it's not always convenient to take a scheduled workshop. So what we've done is we've converted them to e-learning courses where you can sign up. You still have all the support, but you get to take the same course at your own time, at your own convenience. And so those are the, the some of the things that we have done in our organization to try to assist small businesses. We operate two programs, Starter Company Plus and then Summer Company for youth that are interested in entrepreneurship. Gives them a head start to know um, how to be an entrepreneur, get that um, and get that bug in them. Sometimes you see those entrepreneurs, they get so excited in their in their first summer job that they've created for themselves that they become serial entrepreneurs later on. What we've also learned is if you've gone through the summer company program, you're far more employable. You understand what it's like to have a business plan and what is required to make ends meet. And so we know that if you have summer company on your resume, even if you don't wanna be an entrepreneur, you're a little bit up further ahead from a competitive basis when you're applying for jobs. And so those are the things that, uh, that, that we are prioritizing this year, in addition to work in clean technology, manufacturing and agriculture. So I think in closing, um, I think it's, PKD is, is definitely a multifunctioning team. Uh, we have a number of priority areas that we are working on that are mandated by the city and the county for us to work on. Uh, we hope to continue to build the local economy. I think right now we are still in that um, survival mode with many of our businesses because of COVID and we wanna continue to support them. Um, we did offer some funding with our partners at Community Futures Peterborough to help um, some of our tourism-based businesses get through this, this hard time and, and we are grateful uh, for that funding that we received to pass along and we hope that uh, with, with the federal budget there will be more funding programs again to assist and, and support our local businesses as that rolls out. Um, but I do appreciate the amount of work um, that goes on um, in economic development and the number of partners and, and certainly Lynn Holt um, has been a, a big supporter and, and uh, we work closely with her through our economic development roundtable. So I want to thank you for that. And um, I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Well, thank you, Rhonda. Uh, I know we're gonna have some questions here. Uh, do I see a hand? Okay, uh, yes. Thank Rhonda for the report. 
Okay, that's uh, presentation. Me. Very good. Okay, that's me. Uh, Deputy Mayor Wendover, uh, Councilor Lambshead. Yeah, I just like to see the idea that we're we're all working together to go in the same direction. And I think our new Parks and Recreation Master Plan, when it's all developed, will will work hand in hand with some economic development for all our residents and some tourists in our area. So I think it it, it can all work together. So thank you very much for your presentation. And okay. Councilor Armstrong. Thank you, uh, through you, Madam Mayor. Um, just wanted to, again, thank you as well for all of the work and uh, very much appreciate your allowing uh, Gabby uh, to join our uh, Economic Development Advisory Committee. because She's a tremendous resource and a good way for us to have two-way communication with uh, PKED and, and your activities. Gabby Dragomir, Dragomir sorry. <laughs> I had a, had a moment where I couldn't remember her last name. <laughs> That's all right, you're just a kid. <laughs> Um, I've got a few questions, Rhonda. Um, mm -hmm. One of them, as you know, when this government took over, they promised that there would be some relief from places to grow. And I don't know whether um, the organization um, PKED has any input in, uh, in government legislation, but we are absolutely starved for land to develop. Uh, I was upstairs speaking to the building department this morning, and they're just, they're bombarded by people who want to build houses, small houses, big houses, whatever. And as you know, in these areas, we're stuck to what's called the, the hamlet, which is, you know, in our case, Buckhorn, a little bit somewhere else. The hamlet is used up. So here we are within the, the, uh, the accessibility of Peterborough that we are, and we are absolutely starved for land. And they wonder why a young person can't, can't find a place. Well, it's supply and demand. People can do whatever they want. Um, question number two, uh, you and I have talked before about Trail Town. And Trail Town, in my view, as I've expressed, anybody that listened to me is the best economic development driver of tourism that I've ever seen. But the restriction for us to be able to only use that logo within two kilometers of the Trent system is just, it's just, it's tying our hands behind our backs because we are one of the few municipalities that has put some municipal money toward this. And I'm not sure how long that's gonna go for a township that's as rural as ours because two kilometers outside of, of the Trent Canal this leaves probably 90% of our businesses out in the cold. So I think collectively, we're all going to have to keep pounding at that until until that's lifted because initially it was going to be uh, the the Trent Canal system trail town was going to be the introduction to the trails that ran off that system to feed into the rest of the area we need to get back we need to get back to that um, we need your we need your help in doing that because we're a small voice in a in a great big in a great big puddle um, so the places to grow um, there was another thing I wanted to know in here if you have a business that comes to you that has some time constraints, how do you help them manipulate through the system? And where is the, where is the ability for our economic development to actually mentor somebody? Like if, we have a, if we have a company come in here who has got a, in, in terms of economic development, a great idea, are we within our, our um, parameters to be able to say, you know, it looks like a good idea, we'll give you approval in principle. Are we allowed that type of encouragement? We have a, a, a company now coming into Buckhorn who wants to open a, a, a very, a very, um, a really good business downtown Buckhorn. And as you well know, as you go along the system, each area has got strengths. Our strengths are food. And the Buckhorn Canal is our busiest canal for I think the third year in a row. So food is one of those things. It's not going to cost us as a township much to run, but it is going to give our, our downtown area a, a leg up in terms of making some money. So does economic development, PKED, is there a, a process where you can actually take a, a business and walk them through a system? Because as they go into something um, without knowing a lot, they don't know if they should go into planning. They don't know if they should go into building. They don't know if they should go into the fire department. They don't know if they should go uh, into um, the health unit. All of these things are going to be in play, but how do they actually know where to start? 
that they don't do this, this, and this, only to be said, well, you know, that doesn't matter because you missed this. So where are the tools that our economic development, or for that matter, staff, have, or how do they go about developing something that's comprehensive, that somebody doesn't eventually hang up the phone and say, you know what, it's beyond me, I'm going to go somewhere else, because it happens. <laughs> Yes, so thank you. I'm happy to answer those those questions. So the first with places to grow, um, I absolutely um, can can say that um, that has been a huge concern of mine since I have been here. I'm trying to identify where growth can occur, what type of growth can occur at each location. And so one of the big projects that I um, started last year was the business count survey. And, and that wasn't to build out a business directory. We wanted to survey every single business throughout the region, throughout the greater Peterborough area, um, whether it was a farm, a manufacturer, retail, restaurant, it didn't matter. We wanted to connect with them and we wanted to find out a few things. We wanted to find out you know, what type of business is operating, what employment levels are, are operating, is it full-time, part-time, seasonal, how, how much are they and how much space are they occupying? And so those things, we're trying to understand what are the densities of our employment? What are the densities that our businesses are occupying and in what sector? And, and so that we can feed in to planning organizations at the city and the county level to be able to say, are we hitting those um, places to grow targets or how far away are we um, from, from those targets? We don't really have a good handle of, of where we stand at hitting those targets and then um, that data that we will collect, obviously that's intended to be an annual um, business count survey. Terrible year to start it, absolutely, in 2020 in the midst of a pandemic. The goal was to have students go door to door and actually meet with these businesses. Unfortunately, we weren't able to do that because of COVID, so it was a phone call and emails um, to try to get that information, but we still had good results and it, it was a good place to start to understand where we're meeting and achieving those, those um, places to grow targets. It's more armed information to give to planning departments as they go through their lands need assessment um, as they develop their official plans. Certainly my concern um, and, and uh, you know, what I am employed to talk about and, and push for is where are people going to work? We need people working and, and I need to make sure that there's an, um, a long-term supply of employment lands in this region and what does that look like? And so certainly um, our role is to inform, provide data, um, elevate those issues. And, and that's why we have alliances with groups like the Chamber of Commerce, because there's such strong advocacy groups that, that we try to go through our channels through Chambers of Commerce, but also through the EDCO platform and all of EDCO being the Economic Development Council of Ontario to help share some of this work. Um, Trail Towns absolutely agree with you. Trail Towns is a huge um, driver for this region. Um, again, it's one more way, it's one more tool in our toolbox to convince people to come to this region. Whether they're bike, cycling, whether they're, they're boating, whether they're driving, all of those are ways that people are coming through this region and we want them to be able to explore as much as they possibly can. So if we only use the trail town as, as a way to entice them for a little bit, um, it's our job to get them and, and, and um, have them explore beyond um, beyond just the one system that they're coming through. So that is why we're constantly trying to get our tours and businesses to add new product. We actually call it product development to try to get those bigger experiences. So somebody may come, um, we call them authentic adventures is, is really what it is. And, and the first authentic adventure that we developed was the underwater dining. And, and we want to create those experiences that you can't get anywhere else. And so part of the underwater dining is having access to, to the chefs and the food underneath the, you know, the world's largest hydraulic lift lock. Um, that is, was a great, um, a great thing that no one else can offer in the entire world. And, and we get sold out every year that we're allowed to host it, of course. And so we're trying to encourage other tourism operators to think about new ways that they can be encouraging um, development and, and increasing money and spend. And hopefully the goal is to have them become more authentic adventures for us to market. Um, and so again, I think driving it uh, through the trail town, we would be marketing these authentic adventures to trail town uh, users um, as a way to get them off of the trail um, and beyond the trail to explore the entire region. And then from the development approvals question, um, that is that is a, um, 
I would love to be able to uh, to say that there is a quick answer on this one. What I'm finding is that when you have um, nine different councils to work through and nine different municipalities being eight, the eight municipalities of, of the county plus the county plus the city, everyone has their own way of doing things. And so we try to, to have one contact within each of the municipalities. Um, and we try to encourage, you know, walking through the system, trying to, um, we encourage our businesses to reach out to municipal staff first well, with us first to try to understand and work through their business plan so they have a viable business plan to come to the to the municipality with. But um, once they get there, they need to go through the municipal channels and the development approvals process. We try to lay that out as much as possible, depending on what it might be. If it's just a building permit, it goes to the municipality. If they need land severances or they need you know official plan amendments that's where it becomes a little bit more complicated and the scale and the type of use um, there's there's a lot more to talk about so it's hard to say there's just one little checklist i would love it to be that easy to go just do these five things and you'll be done and you're good to go but but uh, development is a lot more complicated than that there's a lot of um, consultations that are required so part of our role is trying to educate the businesses on managing expectations as much as possible um, and then trying to work through them as quickly as possible and to say if you only submit a half completed plan it's going to take longer you need a full completed plan and these are all of the things that are going to happen and 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 certainly um, each municipality has a different um, system um, some municipalities insist on a on a collaborative meeting first where they bring the developer in and they meet all of the agencies all at one time they get any of those red flags out out of the way um, certainly that's a good practice other municipalities um, are, are, are moving to more digital so that that you can process your your development approvals digitally and and so i think that i think we're moving in that direction um, but uh, there's always it's always a timing issue and especially in Canada when we have a short um, construction season um, and you know everyone's pushing to be able to get their foundation in and their building structure up so they can um, be closed in for the winter work um, is always a key so I think it, it's we do our best to try to work through whatever community um, the, the business is, is trying to develop in. Thank you. Anybody else want to add into that little? <laughs> <laughs> I've been I've been saving this up, Rob. <laughs> I have a yes. question there. Yes. Yes, uh, Rhonda. One of the big concerns I have is uh, about housing. I mean, uh, a starter homes costing around four hundred thousand in this area. Uh, rents are close to two thousand dollars a month. Where are these small uh, businesses going to be getting their uh, their employees? They can't afford to live here. They can't find anywhere to live. So I think, and uh, I know that the municipalities and the county and the city of Peterborough do not spend very much money on affordable housing. Yes, through you, Madam Mayor. Um, I, I, it is an absolute uh, supply and demand. Um, we know this is a desirable area that people do want to move here. Um, there is just not enough in the pipeline. Um, and so, so we are seeing those, those increases. Um, I think affordability is always, is always relative. Um, if you are currently living in, in Toronto, um, you know, the prices here are not quite as daunting as somebody who, who is, who's lived here for, for a great deal of time and then, and then needs to try to find a house or just trying to buy their first house. It, it's a very daunting task. So certainly supply and demand, we are certainly encouraging um, more development and, and I think there are plans underway, um, but I would certainly always love to see more. Terry, did I see your hand? No, I was just pointing that okay. Councillor Franzen had a question. Yep. Anyone else? Okay, I certainly uh, appreciate your time and, and information. Carol, were you going to make a I was motion? just going to make a motion to receive. Okay, and do we have a seconder? Uh, Deputy Mayor Windover, thank you again, and uh, we'll see you cross the road one day. Hope so. Thank All you, have a great day. All in favor, and that motion has carried. Okay, now 
Um, we've got our motions. Uh, another delegation we have from Gary Murphy regarding a zoning bylaw amendment. This is a gentleman I think that we couldn't get connected to the last meeting. If you are on there now, let's have a go at it again, Gary. <laughs> I am here. Do you hear me? We do. Okay. Um, do you see me? No. Uh, no. no. I'm not sure what button to click for that. Maybe we'll have to proceed with. But we've got your we've got your map, and that's what we need. Okay, that's important. Oh, there I am here. Uh, share my webcam. There we go. There we go. Yep. Okay. Gotcha. So, thank you for hearing me today. Um, I made some notes, and uh, and of course, there's my little drawing that I made. Uh. I want to point out first that in the meeting I missed, I would have said that uh, on my notice and my application, the building, can I just talk about the building that's left outstanding? I don't have to talk about it all, do I? You, it's your, you talk about whatever you want. Well, the rest, the rest is ex acceptable, apparently, from what I hear. It's the all boathouse right. that's creating, that created a block there. So that, that drawing I have in front of me, this, this is a boathouse. It says it on the application and it requires special exemption. So that first line that I've written with magic marker there represents 14.6 meters from the high water mark. So that's also the front wall of the boathouse. The second line is the 30 meter mark back from the lake. And you can see some X's that I drew in there, and they represent uh, the boathouse in the middle, my uh, new and old building, my proposed building, main building. Uh, my current septic location falls within that strip. So does my new uh, septic. So everything there is inside the 30 meters, closer than 30 meters. But it also includes my neighbors on each end, their main buildings. So my point is there's nothing unusual or unexception, unexceptional about what I'm what I'm asking for here. It's just in keeping with the whole picture. Now, Chris Jones was a consultant who I'm reading off my notes here. He was a consultant who uh, came out and looked at it and he ch changed the wording from boathouse to storage and even when you uh when you guys received it last week you you also used the word storage it kind of drifts away from what i'm asking for um chris jones felt that 50 feet was too far away for a boathouse 50 feet from the water yet everything's there Everything along my strip. I, I, I'm asking for a special exemption, but it looks like everyone has. And that's all within the last 10 years. It's not like 1947 or something like that. Um, okay, so I have the minutes of the meeting and of last week's meeting, and I see that nobody spoke for or against it. But now my neighbor, uh, Janice Platt and Murray Kidd, without me even asking them, wrote a beautiful letter. Yeah, and there it is. And they, uh, just out of the kindness of their hearts, I didn't call them, they called me and asked if that would help. I said, well, I hope anything helps. And she gave all her reasons. Janice wrote that. She gave all her reasons why, uh, why they're in favor. So, Two weeks ago, there was nobody in favor or against. At least now we have some someone in favor, still no one against. And she talks about her privacy. She talks about uh, blocking from the wind and the sun. Uh, she definitely doesn't want a building down by the lake, and neither would I. And neither would my other neighbor, I imagine, if I asked them. Um, I don't see any reason why this. Uh, special exemption can't go through it seems that uh, there's no adverse effect to the land or the lake or the people so especially when 
the I called the Peterborough Health Department and talked to the uh, Kathleen, who is the uh, septic inspector. Uh, she told me I have to be 60 feet back from the lake. So that's obviously also not 30 meters. And it seems that would be the only detriment and that wasn't even a detriment. So I, I don't see any reason why I can't have what I'm asking for as long as uh, special exemptions are allowed and they are there to navigate the system that we, we work within. Um, I should say I looked at the voting guidelines and it, and it doesn't say like Chris Jones might be thinking that uh, that a boathouse has to be adjacent to the water. It says maybe, not must be. So unless uh, you can tell me why I can't have this, I'd, uh, I'd ask that you allow it to go through. Um, do you have any questions? Uh, yeah, I'm going to ask my council if they have questions. Uh, Harry, have, you've seen this, I imagine. Oh yeah, I've seen this. Uh, yeah. From from my personal point of view, if that's what you're asking through you, Mayor, is that Mr. Murphy has the right to build a 794 square foot boathouse on the water's edge. So that remains removing a bunch of trees, devastating the shoreline. That's his as of right to do that at a 50 feet from the shop shoreline, from from his lot line, in front of where he's proposing to put this boathouse. So for me. I think it's good planning to allow the boathouse to be 14.6 meters from the water's edge on land that's already been developed for whatever reason. There's no trees to be removed. There's no shoreline issues. I think that moving the boathouse back and calling it a boathouse, because if you go there right now, there's a boat sitting where the boathouse would be. And I think that that would be the continued use as a boathouse. So I, I think it was a problem with our communications. We couldn't let Mr. Murphy speak at our last meeting because I did have these same questions and comments to make to Mr. Murphy last meeting, and we just couldn't get that to happen. So for me, I would support moving the boathouse 14.6 meters from the shoreline of a deep water trout lake and not devastating the shoreline rather than be able to do that. So I, I would certainly support moving the boathouse back 14.6 meters from the water then. Okay. Yes, um, I, 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 I too will uh, agree with that. I wouldn't look that and uh, I definitely think so. it'd be good. Yeah. Sarah, you got a comment? No, oh, okay. Uh, then I'm going to call for the vote. Anybody want to put a motion? Yes. Go ahead. Sorry, through you. There is the proposed zoning bylaw later on the agenda, item 13.5. Uh, so I feel it would probably be most appropriate to just work the delegation at this time. Okay. And if uh, council wishes, they could defer the passing of the zoning bylaw amendment in the Okay, sure. All right, so can we have a motion then just to receive this uh, at this point and we will deal with it through a motion at a later date. Uh, Councillor Lambshead and Deputy Mayor Windover, all in favor? That motion is carried. Thank you very much, Gary. Okay, did that get allowed? I think well, it's yes. allowed. No. Oh, that'd be nice. It's, yeah. it's, it's, an, it's in a holding, it's in a holding pattern. Oh, okay. I, I think this has to come back before council at another meeting because we are going to defer the approval of the amended zoning bylaw amendment so that we can possibly review the location of the board. Okay, I thought that was what Jesse was talking about doing later on in the agenda. No, that's true. No? Through you, if, if council decides during the bylaw portion of the agenda, they could defer the passing of the zoning bylaw amendment um, and provide direction to staff on how to draft the zoning bylaw amendment. And, and there may be needed consultation needed with planning staff regarding maybe a future public meeting. Um, so it will come before council again, should council defer it. Does council have the ability to just pass it? Through you, I may have to defer to um, Adele here, but I don't believe at this time uh, the bylaw can be passed with the boathouse. Adele? Through you, Madam Mayor, um, we had a public meeting and anybody from the public that was watching the public meeting knew what the decision of council was at the time. 
and we brought forward the zoning bylaw amendment, which you see before you on your agenda today. So if council is reversing their decision, then I would recommend that we hold another public meeting because it wasn't fair to those that attended and uh, watched and saw what council um, made a decision on the actual application. And if council would like a further report um, either for myself or Chris Jones in explanation about the proposed boathouse and how um, Chris Jones identified it as a storage facility because it has a parking area that's going to the boathouse. I'd be happy to bring something forward. Uh, may I speak? Uh, then I, I stand corrected. I think what this means then is it at this point it is going to move forward to another meeting, uh, we'll, we'll have to have a, a public meeting, in which case the public will be given the opportunity to comment on the new recommendation. Is that correct? Am I getting it? We're, we're close. We're close. Can I speak? <laughs> I'm being word I'm being word word pressed over here. Uh, yes, briefly, please. Okay. Um, well, I know it's not as if it's unfair. No one did attend the last meeting. There was nobody, nobody cared enough to attend. Yeah. Well, I guess that's not the problem. I think the problem is now it has been, it has been uh, published uh, in one format, and if we're going to change it, we have to go through the process to change it because right now we would be changing something that the public haven't been given the ability to comment on. I think it, I think it's not going to hold you up a long time, but by the sounds of things, that's the process we have to follow. Okay, is it going to, uh, like, do I have to combat another uh, report from Chris Jones? Because I, that, because I, I don't, I don't. Asian. Um, yes. Didn't Adele say that she could make the report yes. or Chris Jones yeah. could? You go ahead. Through you, we have all the information we need to make a decision and defer decision and change the decision at our next meeting as long as we have a public meeting part of our meeting yeah so yeah. i don't know that we need, i personally do not need another report from anyone i've seen the information that was made available yeah. to us and i'm sure that i can make a very reasonable decision with that information so what i'm hearing then is that the decision will probably come mm -hmm. forth at the next meeting yes mm -hmm. okay, yes well, yes you, I would just refer to Adele. Um, there are timelines in the Planning Act, and I don't know um, with planning yeah. timelines if that can be accommodated. Yeah, through you, Madam, yes. Yes, through you, Madam Mayor, there is a 20 day um, circulation period in order to advertise for our public meeting. So if it won't be coming forward on the meeting of the 4th, but I believe we can make it for the following meeting which would be the 18th. Okay, I guess if that's the way it has to be, that's the way it has to be. Yeah. Okay, so you can be, you can be, uh, you can be assured, Mr. Murphy, that at the way things look now, the 18th is when it's going to appear again, and in all likelihood, it will, uh, it will be okay. Okay, then. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. Um, we don't need any motions for this. Or do we receive his delegation? I think it's a motion to receive. Okay. Here you, we have, we already did. I yeah. think we did that. We did that? Yeah. Okay. We did already. All right, then. We're looking for staff reports, public works. Chelsea, are you there? I am here. Thank you, Mayor Clarkson. Um, through you, this report is in regards to pedestrian crossovers on Lakehurst Road. The Greenscape Streetscape Plan recommended the implementation of pedestrian crosswalks across Lakehurst Road at William Street, John Street, and Fulton Lane. At the December 1st, 2020 Council meeting, Council passed the resolution that Council submits a formal request to the County of Peterborough for the proposed pedestrian crossovers on Lakehurst Road including one located at the Buckhorn Public School in order to establish a bylaw for such and further that council direct staff to obtain costing from three professional engineer firms for the design of the proposed pedestrian crossovers pending approval from the County of Peterborough. The County has advised that County staff will require the exact locations of the proposed pedestrian crossovers on Lakehurst Road 
and also the design by a professional engineering consultant in accordance with OTM Book 15, including illumination, is required prior to approval by the county. Once county staff receive this information, they can prepare a report to county council to update their bylaw. Four options have been outlined for council's consideration today, and this concludes my report summary. Thank you. Do we have comment? Has anybody driven down there and taken a look at these at these proposed locations? I never looked at them, but yeah. I know where they are. What do you think, Ron? Well, yeah, I, I never figured to get out and looked at it. I'm wondering if the one at Adam and Eve shouldn't be moved down a bit. I don't see that much traffic coming through coming through there because it's across from it's just at the bottom of the hill going across the medical center and there aren't very many people walk across there so I think this is something that's worth um, worth us going down and taking a look at before we give uh, I have no problem with two of them I have no problem with this with the school I have a problem with the other one For you, Mayor Clarkson, I think it is important to consider um, the benefits that the pedestrian crossovers would create to the downtown core, um, what advantage it would provide residents with crossing over to the other side of the road, um, keeping in mind that the, the Buckhorn um, walkway will be will be completed this spring or later this spring, and all the attractions are on that side of the road already. Yeah, I think I think what the residents are looking for, the businesses are looking for, is traffic calming. Uh, because the slower, it's one way to kind of slow the traffic down that goes around the corner. Uh, up at William Street is not. I I just have I have problems with that one. I've looked at it a couple of times, and I I would like to see that one move for uh, further into the village, but I'd like to see other co uh, council members take a look at that. We're going to have this a long time. So if we could sure. if we could delay that decision till the next meeting, I would certainly prefer it. Through you, Mayor Clarkson, one more thing to add. It was recently brought to my attention that the county will be um, looking at lowering the speed limits in built up areas, and this in would include um, the Buckhorn area. So if your concerns are with speeding, um, then this study that the county is looking at completing uh, might alleviate your concerns. Mm -hmm. Well, I know what you're saying, but speeding, uh, for people who do it, the speed limit doesn't mean a whole lot. And to go around that corner, walk across from where the drugstore is over to the general store, you're taking your life in your hands. Uh, uh, count, uh, counselor, or whatever your name is over there. <laughs> I'm, just thinking, I'm, I'm just thinking that crosswalks and crossovers are completely two different things we could implement a couple of crosswalks that have signage and flashing lights that are reasonably inexpensive to do. A crossover is rather expensive and onerous. What's the difference? Well, a crossover is a built up area that you walk above the road. Oh, no, 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 that's not what they're looking at. I don't we want any of those. We want- No, that's simply, not what they're looking at. Yeah, we at. want crosswalks. Yeah, it's crosswalks yeah. you're looking at. Through you, Mayor Clarkson, it was my understanding the difference between the two after speaking with the county is a crosswalk is at um, like a set of lights. So you'd be implementing something there and then a crossover would be at an area where there's not already controlled lights. So we'd be looking at potentially a controlled crossing or an uncontrolled crossing, where a controlled crossing where vehicles or motorists are required to stop or yield to pedestrians and uncontrolled crossing would be where pedestrians have to wait for a safe gap in traffic sufficient for them to cross the roadway prior to attempting to enter the roadway. Well, I would certainly like to see council take a look at that, take a take a run through the village and make some notes. Yes, Carol. Um, if I can, add, what would your recommendation be, Madam Mayor? Because I, it's possible we can defer it to the next meeting, but we're gonna run into a time crunch just like we did last year. So I wouldn't wanna defer it any longer. And if, if you have a, because you probably have a greatest knowledge of that area and the and the traffic do you have a recommendation at this stage i think the recommendation that i have i'm not i'm not even concerned about the william street i don't know that william street's going to serve a lot i'd like to see one come out um, 
right across from where the daycare is because where the daycare comes out the kids the kids uh, stand uh, the parents stand on both sides of the road there to get the kids across either the bus or over to the daycare so that's a really busy little little spot uh, the other one that's busy is the one that comes and it's probably too close but the other one comes out from the pizza place the other one that's down at the stabler uh, not stable but the Fulton corner that's an ideal one that's a no-brainer because that catches all of the people just past the restaurant to go back and forth. Mm -hmm. It's those other two quite it's those other two exchanges that I'm not sure about. Like I would rather see the I'd rather see the William Street move down to uh, where the daycare is. Where the like the library. Yeah, where yeah. the library and the daycare is. Yeah. Because that's that is a that's an area of crossover. Yeah. I don't want to make I don't want to be the one that makes that by myself. I'd like to see a couple of people take a look at that. Even if it's then just give the give the office a phone call and say, you know what, I'm okay with that. But uh, the school is a no-brainer, the Fulton one's a no-brainer. The big congestion is right at the corner. And whether or not one coming out of the library is sufficient to stop that traffic from going around that corner or not, I don't know. Or whether to actually, but if, to come out for the, from where the pizza place is, which would be the best traffic calming, then people are going to be, they're going to come around the corner the other way, being caught off guard, yeah. because somebody's crossing the road without being able to see where the crossover is. So it works really well from one direction, but it's almost a blind crossover going the other way. You know, if you come up, uh, Carol, from the park, mm -hmm. and you come up across the, the drugstore, Right. immediately you turn the corner that's where the speed is but as i say to put a crosswalk there these people coming here don't know there's somebody in the road here right so yeah it would work this way very well but it's going to put them in jeopardy from people coming this direction so the library is probably a happy medium there so you're in there of just having the two and the school yes yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't see where a third one can be put in there that isn't going to be problematic. The library. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that. But if anybody wants to take a drive down there and say, no, I see where the third one could be, by all means do it. I'm happy, sorry, I'm happy to defer to uh Okay, to you your expertise in yeah. particular and anybody else's input. Well, it's just I know where the kids are and and you know the library's a busy spot. And the majority of people come out of Adam and Eve that go down to the medical center, they drive. And there's lots of vis visibility there. That's not a blind corner by any means. And to slow the traffic there, they're already speeded up by the time they get down to the corner. So it gives them just a little bit more um, visibility. And, and, and uh, anyway, that's if I'm asked to make the decision, that's what I would make. Carrie, do you want to take a drive down and see? Yeah, I do, yeah. Yeah, I, I just want to make I just want to make a comment, Janet or yep. uh, Mayor Clarkson. Um, I, I agree with you th on three. I, I think that once you start putting more than three in, that they may be ignored. Y you know, it's not a long stretch of road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So so I would concur with three. And Is I would it? concur. I would concur. And I would concur with uh, Councillor Armstrong that uh, uh, you have the best knowledge of that area and uh, I, I would support your recommendation. And that leaves the school as being the third one. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, it's, ne it's necessary. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think three are adequate. When we go over that. Okay. So do we need a motion for this then? I guess we do. Chelsea, do you want a motion? Yes, please. Yes, Can please. I just add one more thing for your information? Um, sure. For you, the uh, school crossing on Lakehurst Road at the, the Buckhorn Public School, it's not currently listed in the county's bylaw and it would be considered um, a school crossing and not a pedestrian crossover. Um, it will require a design as well in accordance with OTM Book 15, um, it, but it would be costs that would have to be absorbed by the municipality. Um, and then we needed to confirm if there was a dedicated school crossing guard. And um, after having a conversation with the Buckhorn Public School, there is no um, dedicated school crossing guard. 
Well, there isn't at this time because there never has had to be. It's just been a, it's been loosey goosey. <laughs> but there is a lot of movement across the road at that location. So whatever we have to do to make it happen, we should make it happen. Two, there's two things that are that are are going to be uh, beneficial there. One is the access of the kids to go over, and if the rink happens to stay where it is, they use that all the time. But if not, the teachers park over there. They walk back and forth. Uh, and the other the other thing that it will do is it will slow the traffic down because the speed limits are reduced. But if you sit in that parking lot and watch, people go through there like crazy. So it has a it has a traffic calming effect. So I was I was surprised that it wasn't uh, that it wasn't included. It just seems to me if I had to pick one, that would probably be the most important one that I would pick. Yep. It's supposed to be forty. Excuse me. It's supposed to be forty there. Yeah. <laughs> um, Councilor Lambert. Oh, right. So possibly we may defer a decision on this until we decide the exact locations of each one. I think you only need the two. We've kind of almost unanimous. We only need two in the in the village. In the village. And then we're looking at one at the Buckhorn Public School. Yeah. So I think maybe we need to find the exact locations what we're talking about here because I'm yeah. not exactly positive where as to where you want it. So I would like to defer this decision until council decides where they would like them and see if that can be matched in with the county road, county of Peterborough, because they do own the road. Okay. I would second that as a motion, provided it comes back to the May. Fourth meeting, I think, was okay, the day. Okay, so the we need to meeting. get on this. So I don't want this to go on. No, okay, longer than that. All right. I just want to have one, uh, Janet. I have yes. just one further comment. Yeah. Is uh, it would also be helpful to the Buckhorn Community Center because when they have an event there, there's a lot of uh, people that park at the school and cross the road, and it's really uh, difficult to get across the road when people are going about 70 or 80 kilometers an hour. No, I agree. It's beneficial, it's beneficial all around. Yeah. Yeah. But we need to determine there again the recommendation, and the recommendation is from the lower. Well, it would be the uh, east, the east side of that parking lot. Uh, Ron, you had a comment. Oh, it's just great. If they don't slow down for the lights and it even tells you the speed you're going, <laughs> <laughs> then they aren't going to stop. For, they aren't going to slow down for a crosswalk. <laughs> No, but a crosswalk then allows them to actually put a guard there that's that's legal. Yeah. They're there with a the little hand up and yeah. the kids there, there's some of those kids that are old enough to be uh, our guards and that school, they go in there very early in the morning because they they uh, they, meet, they meet up with buses that take them different places. So a crossing guard is not a problem there. Okay, uh, so one meeting deferral is what we're looking at. And we have a mover and a seconder sure. would be yeah. Ron. Uh, all in favor? Carried. Now, um, Ivan, are you on there? Calling all Ivans. Yes. Hello, well, Madam Mayor, Council. Yes. Um, still Sorry, Ivan, uh, we're on 10.1.2, which is still um, Chelsea with the maintenance of the roadsides of Lakers Road and Buckhorn, unless you're speaking to that. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Chelsea. Wrap That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Clarkson, and through you. This report is in regards to the roadside maintenance along Lakehurst Road in Buckhorn. At the special council meeting held November 16th, 2020, council directed staff to approach the County of Peterborough to confirm responsibility of the maintenance of the roadsides of Lakehurst Road in Buckhorn and request maintenance work be completed or request the municipality be compensated for performing the work. The county has indicated that they complete roadside mowing in accordance with the minimum maintenance minimum maintenance standards and their past practice. A request for additional roadside mowing is considered beyond the county's typical maintenance standard for roadside mowing and cannot be accommodated. The county does not currently compensate municipalities or property owners for any enhanced or additional roadside mowing that they perform. The county does, however, permit municipalities and property owners to complete additional roadside mowing at their expense. This concludes my report summary. I'm I'm sorry because I read that and uh, and I think it I think it's extremely important for us to determine who is going to take who is going to take this care. Uh, there is no, in my view, there is no point in um, in in building 
parks and and uh, sidewalks and everything else if that stretch is not uh, if the grass is not looked after properly there so whether or not this is uh, is Dylan's or whether it's Ivan's but we know that the county is not going to participate in this so there's only two people that can and it's either us or the county but it is a mess Carol I uh, thank you uh, for you Madam Mayor I was just going to say I think the decision is whether we want different standards within the hamlet of Buckhorn which is a, a community improvement area than what the county currently has so that's the first decision do we want different standards within the hamlet and then number two if we do then you know it looks like the county has washed their hands of it and we would have to absorb that so are we prepared to and budgeting to do that but i think the first question is do, do we want or need different standards within the hamlet of buckhorn than what the county already has for their maintenance uh, functions well i think we know what the county is going to do which is nothing and there isn't any there's nothing we can do there we're not looking at a huge amount of roadside because the park is already looked after that area by dylan mm -hmm. and it's pretty much maintained all the way up through on that side now there's been some request to do the roadside from uh, William Street down to the medical center but only on the one side of the road because the other side is pretty much maintained by the people as well so we're not looking at very much time we'd be looking at maybe maybe two hours every two weeks it wouldn't be huge you get in there with a weed eater and you'd knock down that that center area without without a lot of and so far they don't do anything with the actual the actual little bee but if we want to, if we want to put a face on the municipality, we've got to do something about the weeds and and, and junk in the, in the, in that ditch. Comments? Yes. It is in our community improvement plan, and that is certainly in the scope of community improvement. I I'd be willing to maybe have our our parks manager have a look at it and see what he kind of thinks that'll cost to maintain that a couple three four times every summer i i concur with that do we have a yeah. seconder for that yeah uh excuse me yeah. mayor collection yes uh I, I think we should receive the counties uh, uh before we uh, uh pass another motion okay we... and i i move that we well, receive tell them to the go far away from us <laughs> Well, we know that what what uh, service we're going to get from the county, so yeah. I, I would make a mo motion. I, I, I'd like to receive that uh, the document, and then okay. uh, I, I would support Terry's motion uh, okay. when we get. To you're it. going to make you're going to make the motion that we receive this. So I need a seconder yeah. for that. Okay, Deputy Deputy Mayor Windover, all in favor? And now we'll we'll look at a second motion. Yep. And Terry, you were going to do that to have Dylan sure, take a look at it. The second motion would be to have staff have a look at yeah. the cost of maintaining that few sections of the road that aren't maintained by the county to a standard that is reasonable for the community improvement plan. Okay. And do we have a seconder? And is there any comment? I'll uh, say. Okay. Deputy Mayor Windover, uh, comment. All in favor? Carried. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well done. Well done. Now, Ivan, you're not off the hook yet. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor <laughs> Council. Um, you have uh, the first quarter report prepared by uh, myself and Chelsea. Um, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Ivan, I have a question. I don't think it's on the report. What are we going to do about property standards and the degree of dilapidated buildings and signs that we've got in this municipality? And who's who's the response who's the responsible person for this? Because we are just we're growing these things like mushrooms. My comment, it's a bylaw infraction, and that would be the department to enforce them. Now, which department? Building enforcement, I would say. Um, 
if they're not my signs, um, it would be a bylaw and that we'd be building and planning. Through you, Madam Mayor, that's correct. It would be building and planning that would look after property standards and signage. And that's one of the bylaws that uh, mm -hmm. staff need to review and look at updating uh, the actual bylaw. Okay, so then maybe the next meeting we should bring a notion of, by, of motion to have that, to direct staff to do that. Would you prefer that, Donna? So through you, I believe that the, that's already on the work plan mm -hmm. for that department. Okay. So um, yes, they're okay. working on that. All right. So anybody then, any questions for Ivan while we've got him? Yes. Thank you. Uh, through you, Manor, I've, uh, what do I have? Two questions and one comment. Um, first of all, just to confirm that you believe we will be able to construct the Cavendish Dome during this uh, construction season? If everything goes smoothing with plans and the zoning plan amendments, um, it shouldn't take long to do it once we get a green light to proceed. Perfect. Okay. Um, that's the right answer. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> the second one is I've, I've seen on social media, and it, of course, is not a reliable source, that they are going to be repairing the Buckhorn Bridge. It, 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 ha, is that true? And has the county advised us? And do we have something posted to that effect to no, our residents? Not yet. They started, yes, they started yesterday. Yeah. I can, I can <clears throat> speak to that. Through you, Mayor Clarkson, we did receive notice from the county of Peterborough regarding the the work to be completed on the bridge and the Trent Canal Bridge. Um, uh, based on the notice that came from the county, um, it looks like that they will be commencing April 19th, which was yesterday with a tentative completion date of May 21st. Um, it has been posted onto our social media as well. Okay. They were putting the lights up there today for the for stopping and it's on our website. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Great, thank you. Um, and the third one is just a, a, a comment, um, and this is a theme that runs through every quarterly report. It's pretty interesting to note that in the first quarter, the number of vehicles that went to our transfer stations rose 40% over Q1 of last year. Um, and I don't think that's at all surprising given the grounded snowbirds and the number of cottages mm -hmm. are up here. Thankfully, the increase in rate waste was only 23%. And I think we all anticipated we would have an increase in waste for just those reasons. Um, so it's really not a question other than a, a, an observation. And you know, the only obviously we seem to be managing our resources to support that level of activity. Okay. Any other comments for Ivan? Well, you look like you got one. I'm just going to make a motion to receive. For information purposes. Okay, thank you for that. And a seconded by uh, Deputy Mayor Windover. All in favor? Carried. Dylan, are you there? I am here. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Go ahead. All right. So before council, there is my report titled Recreation Facility Space Needs. Um, this is with regards to council's uh resolution at the april 6th meeting in which staff were directed to consider alternate options and assess current and future growth space needs uh, within this report i outline um, exactly what we are to date at our current location at the municipal office um, this this site i believe can accommodate um, up to about additional two staff members within our department um, you know, as our service levels stand now, you know, that's, <clears throat> that's about what this, this facility can accommodate. Certainly in terms of storage, things are not ideal, but they're manageable. Um, we, we've outlined what space requirements we, we would recommend at current staffing levels at a new facility if that be considered. And then to address the council's request of future growth, we have provided a best guess um, I completely understand that this is a a shot in the dark, and that it might the numbers might be intimidating to council. These are are, are surely staff's best guess if considerations with re relationship to the uh, parks, rec, culture, and master plan, um, including trails, boat launches, beaches, parks, um, as well as some of the other council initiatives that have come forward recently, being 
campgrounds, dock, gazebo and gardens, um, you know, as well as new sports facilities such as ice pads. There's, there's a lot of potential there, not to say that it would happen, it's obviously still at council's discretion, um, but if we're building a building for the future, we need to take that into consideration. consideration. Because the scale and scope of these initiatives are so unknown at this point in time, um, my recommendation to council is to defer any um, decision on space needs and signing of a future hub for the department until we can have a better, lay better eyes on what the potential growth could be in the future. And then we can make an informed decision um, to build a space that properly meets the department. Okay, um, this is uh, this is a nice report. Uh, do I have a uh, comment? Uh, Council Lampsand? Yeah, my, my comment is I, I, I completely agree with Mr. Kosh that we're in limbo with what we're asking that department to do. So it's difficult to make a decision on what you think that department is going to look at like in the near future until we know what the near future is going to bring, which is our parks and recreation and culture master plan, our our, our ideas with Udenang Park, uh, our ideas with docks and gazebos and maintenance of side roads and things. I, I, I think his recommendation number one is quite appropriate. Do we have comment on that? I think Councillor Fanson. Oh, there he is. Go ahead. Yes, yeah. Peter Clarkson. Uh, I'm looking for you uh, at the end of the table there, Peter. <laughs> What's that? I'm looking for you down at the end of the table. Oh, I see. You just have to yell oh, what, When the stay-at-home order is gone, I'll, I'll be back to the council. Well, you're the only one of the bunch of us that paid any attention, so well on you. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Uh, the only comment I have is, is about the... Uh, uh, potential of uh, five uh, spaces in the garage uh, for four, five, four trucks and uh, the trailer. I, I, I drive by Ontario Hydro and I see all their trucks parked outside. I, I drive by uh, 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 Sand and Gravel, Buckhorn Sand and Gravel, and they do landscaping work and all of their vehicles are outside. I, I, I just don't understand why why trucks have to be uh, parked inside a, in a municipal structure. I can speak. No. <laughs> Through you, Mayor, uh, to you, Councillor Franzen, it, it's not a fact that they need to be. Uh, I, I would agree that they don't need to be parked inside. It's not a requirement to operate the vehicle. It's just a recommendation to prolong the life and therefore we can buy less of them and therefore reducing the pressures on the tax levy down the road over the course of a building. It's it, it's it's ultimately down to council's discretion and it, it's just staff's recommendation. Okay, well, I think okay. right now the, this recommendation is to receive this report until we've got yeah. more, more detailed information. So if, if I will entertain that motion. Uh, Councillor Armstrong, unless you have a comment. I have a comment, I do. I, I, I have a little con contrarian perspective, which happens sometimes. Um, first, first, I want to acknowledge this department does way more work than I think most people uh, understand with the of facilities and outdoor spaces, et cetera. And it has already grown enormously over the last couple of years. So uh, I, I do want to acknowledge all of that and, and thank you for this report. You did a really thorough job. My personal position is number one, we can't wait on building the dedicated mechanics facility and space for the public works group. Um, we need to move ahead with that. We now know that 49 is essentially past its useful life anyway. So start with that. Secondly, forecasts are just that. You never know the future. You got to take your best shot at it. Um, I think you've laid out two scenarios. One is no growth. That's not going to happen. The other scenario is that the department doubles in size. That's not likely to happen because we're not likely to accept all of the recommendations from PRCAC. I mean, a likely scenario is that the department will grow by 50%. If we're off a little bit, most of the growth will be in seasonal personnel anyway, who I believe can be accommodated. 
So my contrarian view would be, let's move ahead with option two. Let's have Greenview, Greenview sorry, consider the requirements for this department as you've outlined with the assumption of a 50% growth in the department and let them then come back with their previous report and give us that option five, which is for shared facility development. So I'm leaning towards option two for all those reasons. I'm leaning toward getting more information from the rest of my council. Deputy Mayor Windor, have you got a comment? No, sir. Thank you. Councillor Lambshead. Oh, I always have a comment. <laughs> I think I, I think being part of the dedicated mechanics facility rather than a standalone building makes yes. so much sense to me. Yeah. You know, you, you could certainly find support for that. Yes. So through you, um, I might, if council are willing, let Chelsea, he's done some work um, and has, I actually think there might be a drawing up there. I think a good discussion would be on the current size of that building, what's been proposed by Greenview. And maybe Chelsea, can you just allude to the spacing as well, just to allow council to, um, you know, make a, an informed decision? Yes, no problem. I'd be happy to speak to this. So through you, Mayor Clarkson, um, before you is the the site plan for the at the 49 location for the new dedicated mechanics facility. So I know it's small in scale, but I'll try to, to go through some of the key points that have been brought up by Greenview. So Greenview has indicated that there are some size restraints when it comes to the dedicated mechanics facility. So the proposed building is currently 100 feet in width and um, Greenview has advised that the site is constrained relative to the existing garage and sand domes, which limits the size of the new building. Initially, elements that may be impacted include, but may not be limited to, ability for trucks to access the building from the south side without having to perform a multi-point turn, um, the overall building structure and cost, um, site access, site drainage and stormwater management, and setbacks requirements. So, um, as you can see, on this site map, we have a stormwater water management area. So right now the stormwater management area allows drainage on our actual site and not drainage onto um, an adjacent property. So this is uh, works to our advantage when it comes to obtaining our ECA through the Ministry of the Environment. Typically when you have stormwater management, if it starts to drain onto an adjacent property, that's where the Ministry of the Environment may have some, some issues and more questions to come during the process of obtaining the environmental compliance approval. Um, another point that has been brought up from, from Greenview um, is the size of the building may trigger construction and or firefighting requirements such as sprinkler systems. So these were not previously considered, but in accordance with Ontario Building Code um, may be necessary um, in addition to additional washrooms. So right now um, there's an 18 occupancy plus, um, and then once you reach those certain um, occupancy numbers, then it will trigger other requirements within the building, therefore making the building uh, footprint have to be larger in scale. So Greenview did complete a public works space needs. And based on this space needs study that was completed, the proposed building configuration and overall building size of approximately 100 feet wide by 158 feet long, as shown in, in this diagram, has been confirmed as meeting the space needs for public works. Um, the building's interior configuration and layout will be confirmed as the building design develops. Um, ancillary spades were, or sorry, ancillary space needs were also discussed, and it was agreed that the focus for ancillary space needs would be focused on the overall purpose of the building, which is a dedicated fleet uh, maintenance facility. Um, this was confirmed and uh, by the municipality when we had a site visit a few weeks ago. Therefore. Um, Adding another whole other department and uh, the space needs will completely change the scope of this project um, and increasing the, the footprint of this building may not be um, quite as feasible 
One other thing that I will mention here is the future building expansion area is indicated in this site map. Um, if we were to expand, use this expansion area now, which is, is always a possibility, but again, it might trigger other um, construction um, costs such as having to put another bathroom because you have to have a bathroom within within a certain distance, but it will also um, not allow for future expansion in the future. So this is just all information that I thought was important to pass along um, for Council's consideration and information when making a decision with in regards to this facility and, and this and the size of the building. But I'd be happy to answer any questions if you have any. Chelsea, I have a I have a question. Where does the uh, 18 people come from? Because people are going to leave trucks in there to be to be repaired. So there's going to be a mechanic, uh, maybe somebody who's going to look after the movement of um, parts back and forth, an assistant mechanic. Everybody else that's in there should be moving in and out, in and out. So where does that 18 people come from? And in terms of putting that addition on. Why can these these washrooms and kitchens and things not be not be shared and cut down on some of that some of that duplication? Because it's the same thing as Dylan's report. They talk about all of these people, but in actual fact, what are the numbers of people? So that's that's concerns that I have. Um, Terry, I think you had your hand up also. No, it was Carol. Carol? Why don't we go ahead with your questions first, Madam Mayor? I no, I'm I'm okay with that. Okay. I, yeah. All right. Um, you want, did you want to comment on that before we move on? Or? Sure. Yeah, I'd be happy to provide some information and answer those questions. So through you, Mayor Clarkson. Um, uh, when I mentioned about the the washrooms and the occupancies, so um, uh, there's certain occupancies that will trigger additional washrooms. So 18 um, additional washrooms, so the 18 occupancy plus was taking into consideration any future growth and the other occupancy um, threshold was nine. So if we have up to nine people, then we can have one washroom. If you go beyond that, that's when you're going to need an additional washroom. So in taking into consideration um, future expansion or growth within that department, um, we went with the the 18 person occupancy, um, and that was also identified through the space need study, where we actually listed every single staff person within Public Works and identified if they would be working out of this building on a continuous basis, if it would be intermittent. And it was noted that many of the operators will be at this building intermittently. They will report to work here and then go to their assigned tasks for the day. It was identified that the director of public works as well as the mechanic and another laborer who often assists, assists the mechanic as well as one four person who um, does oversee a lot of the mechanics operations would be um, at this facility on a regular basis. So uh, cool. Greenview did need to take into consideration the space needs of all the intermittent staffing as well to ensure that there's the appropriate number of, of washrooms in accordance with the Ontario Building Code. Anybody else with a comment? I think this thing has grown legs. Um, yeah. Yes. Thank you, Dream Madam Mayor. Um, I, I appreciate that some considerable work has already been done in designing a standalone public works building. Since that was completed, we have learned, and this is new information, that recreation facilities cannot move into 49 because it has passed its useful life. And even if we repaired it, it would only have a few years. So we now have new information. Um, and I haven't heard anything that says it's impossible to build a shared building. I would still like to see Greenview go back and prepare that as one of their options, considering the requirements for the uh, uh, Recreation Facilities Department and assuming a middle ground scenario of about a 50% growth. Anybody else? I know you've got a comment. You're just sitting there waiting. That's, that's kind of what I thought we talked about couple meetings ago that we would have a look at that a little more accuracy 
I, I know we don't want to delay getting this on the ground and going, but to me, one building should be able to accommodate them both when I see a whole bunch of empty space behind it. I know future expansion might be different, but that is in the future. Well, and if you look at our roads, you and I talked about this uh, yesterday. If you look at the roads in this municipality, we're not going to uh, develop a lot more roads. Any of the construction that's going on here is going in fire routes and whatever. So in terms of needing more trucks and that kind of thing in the foreseeable future, it's not like we've got access to the 401 or access to developed land. So for us to forecast uh, a lot of growth, that isn't going to happen. If you if you want to go backwards and you look and, and you look and you see the growth in roads going back 10 years, you will see a very minimal change in what what we need in terms of plows and staff. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we're I think we're um, I think we're building to a future that probably doesn't actually match our needs. I think the 18 people type of thing. If we've got 18 people sitting around in there, they're in the wrong place. And as far as I've been talking about. Uh, people needing to show up there to go to work. Well, in this day and age, you don't show up there to go to work. You have your director from wherever they happen to be send people to wherever they're going to go. So that's why we're going to keep a depot in Galway and a, and a depot in in Cavendish and one in Buckhorn. So those are those trucks are there. So the trucks that go up there are there to be repaired. They're not there to start to work in the morning. So let's keep in mind what this is. This is a repair depot. This is not that grand uh, 49 that was envisioned four or five years ago. This is a, a repair depot. And if this was everything that you're talking about, we would not have gone ahead with the other three sites. So I think we've got to go back to what we had decided on, what we what we determined the needs were, and and uh, and come up with a building that that meets that not something that that has has morphed into where we started out and sure, Mayor Clarkson, may i just add one comment um and i just want to clarify because i don't think that i was very clear when speaking to the occupancies and i apologize but um, in regards to the occupancies, this is all in accordance with the Ontario Building Code. So you can have one, a single universal washroom is sufficient for up to 10 occupants as per the building code or two lockable washrooms for up to 18 occupants. So that's where the 18 is, is coming from. So that's where we used that number to determine how like the, the washroom sizes and how many that we would need in a court to be compliant with the Ontario Building Code. So I just wanted to to clarify that one point because I don't think I was very clear. How many um, how many uh, units are in there for trucks? Because they're drive through, right? So you put two in a section, you drive one, then drive the other out, and I think there were going to be two lifts, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Yeah, so in a sorry through you, Mayor Clarkson, in accordance with um, Council's initial. Um, resolution back in November. It was to include two double bays, one double wash bay, and two double equipment bays. So, um, I'm, so right beside the ancillary space are the two double um, mechanics bays for obviously to for equipment to be worked on. Beside that, there was discussions of having a wash bay, and then beside the wash bay would be the two. Um, storage base that would be used for storage of, of equipment, tools, whatever the need may be for the dedicated mechanics facility. Through you, Mayor? Yes. Um, and, and Chelsea can correct me if I'm wrong here on the, on the numbers and everything. If I'm just got a piece of paper here in front of me, if we're you know, if we're looking at that 18 person occupancy, we can kind of put that in perspective. If, if you know, if my department's going, we're looking at six currently um, with Carol's suggestion of 50%, we're looking at nine. Um, if the director of public works is there, the mechanic is there, the mechanic's assistant and the foreman are there, um, that brings us up to 13 people. If we then, I believe the drivers that currently operate out of 49 are also proposed to operate out of there. We're adding another, uh, and this is where Chelsea might need to correct me, I, I think it's four drivers that are there, but I could be wrong. We're, we're up to 17 people already. Well, I, I don't think the, the 18 number is kind of in line with that. But you're talking about 18 in total now. You're talking about combined. Yeah. You're not talking about, about each facility. You're talking about combining them. 
Yeah, so, yeah, so yeah. for both. Yeah. If you can share a kitchen, share the washrooms, and put in just the space that you need to do the work on your vehicles, because for the time being, there's nothing to save the building across the way from being used for storage. Like, are we going to knock down a perfectly good building that can be used for storage? Yes, Donna. So through you, the indication is if that building is going to continue to be used, we would have to put at least $50,000 into that building just to use it in the current capacity. Which if you look at the cost that we're looking at, $50,000 yeah. is pretty insignificant. And I, I believe through you, there would have to be some further determination through some additional studies if it needed other work as well. But yeah, that was the minimum requirement. Well, I guess what I would like to see, and I, I don't think it's probably that much different than the council, I'd like to see something that would be as, as functional, but as compact as we can possibly make it to put the two of them in the same, in the same, uh, same building, share as much as we can possibly share, uh, workspace, you know, we're we're looking at a 30 at a 30 foot area to workspace. Well, if you look at lawnmowers and things today and the, the type of repairs that's going to be done there, I'm not even sure that that workspace can't be shared. Because almost everything that you've got is under warranty. As soon as it gets to be a certain age, it's gone. So a 30 foot workspace when you're when you're going to be uh, sharing the space of a of a, a works depot. There should be able to be a corner there somewhere that both people can can use, use the same tools, use whatever, and uh, it just it seems to me that we're we're growing maybe larger than we need. Like sure. sharing is sharing is the cheapest thing that we can possibly do. Yeah. Through you, Mayor Clarkson, um, I certainly certainly agree with the sharing the space needs if, if it's something that's that's deemed feasible. I just wanted to, again, note that based on the space needs study completed by Greenview, they did say that this current building size as is um, meets the needs of public works um, right now, and that would allow for um, storage space of all of their products and uh, tool space as well for all the tools that are required to work on the all the equipment all the vehicles so i think just um getting a clear direction from council on space needs for two separate departments and knowing the building size constraints and how you would like staff to to move forward and ensuring effective operations of two different departments um, mm -hmm. and ensuring that their space needs are accommodated through the new build process okay um I'm I'm going to su I'm going to suggest that uh, Dylan gets together with whoever and they determine how much of the space can be uh, can be shared in terms of repair of vehicles that that building is going to be repairing the parks and rec so that part of it's all that part of it's already used I think right now you've got a riding lawnmower I don't know how many small mowers you've got in in weed eaters. So that space, whether or not the, the space for the, the new building is large enough to be able to accommodate a corner, they will look after that, whether or not there's shared workbenches that can be done here. Uh, don't forget, we're all under the same township. We don't have, it's not like this group are accountable here and that group are accountable there. We should be able to, uh, to combine these two units. So I don't know. I would I would send them back to the drawing board to see what can come up. Yep. Would be the most most efficient. Through you there. Yes. Um, in my there, I provided you know exactly what we have for current space. This is the the space that we occupy today and require you know as as we are today. Um, if, if that's council desire to take that forward then we can go with that where greenview needs a, a a space needs approved for us so that's what we've brought forward is a space need. council wants to you know if we're going to go with carol's you know 50 percent suggestion that that's fine we can we can move forward with that staff just need direction on that that portion we, we've provided what we need for for space there future growth so 
Okay, uh, but I think what you were looking at was not sharing washrooms, kitchens, some uh, repaired space. Um, you know, once you start to compare things and and mesh things together, then your plan might look a little different. Carol, you have a comment? I do, thank you. Uh, actually, I was gonna make a motion. If I refer back to our earlier motion, um, the second part of it was to, to direct staff with the assistance of the consultant to go back and review other options, including shared space for parks and recreation and public works, and further, that the report assess current and further growth needs. I think that still stands. The only addition I would suggest, and I, I'm open, I, I just threw out that when you're forecasting, you kind of do a worst case, best case, and the middle case, and you forecast on the middle case. And the middle case in this case is a 50% growth in the parks and in the recreation facilities staff. And that would be the requirement that would be carried over to the staff needs uh, for Greenview to do exactly as we had recommended in our motion from the last meeting. But now in the, res in the res uh, motion that comes through from Dylan, is there um, uh, uh, in building storage? Because we don't need it. Well, that would be an option. I would suggest, sorry, three, Madam Mayor, I would suggest that yeah, Greenview. Look at those options. And bring well, that's forward. that's our that's our um, that's not Greenview telling us. That's not telling us to Greenview what what it is, because you don't see a public works department anywhere with vehicles are inside anymore. It just doesn't happen. If you get some of the plows, they'll put them in if they've got to be out in the middle of the night. But you don't see you don't see um, pickup trucks uh, stored in in heated units. You can't afford it. So. I think there has to be, there, you know, you can't just throw it out there because, you know, the the bigger the idea, the better the money and whatever. So yep. there has to be some there has to be some uh, parameters put around that. Yes, Ron. But I can't see us increasing things by 50 <clears> percent. <throat> we just never will need 50 percent increase. And I'm sorry. with roads to the apartment. No, no, not roads. Sorry, Ron, not not roads. I was talking about specifically just recreation, and uh, I was speaking about recreation facilities specifically oh, with the fifty percent. Sorry, just clarifying. I meant the whole no, 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 not roads. They're done. Their space needs are already uh, assessed. I think we need to try to figure out a way to get both of those departments in one building, whether yeah. it's accessed from the east end there or whatever. I think there is enough space on that property to accommodate that. I mean, it's a huge piece of property. It's, is it the perfect scenario? Probably not, but it, it's something that's going to work now and into the future. So. Yep. Through you, Mayor, if I may speak again. Sure. Um, it, what, what we are putting forward here isn't a specifically request for our own building a separate building this this is our space needs not necessarily on our own not necessarily with anybody the greenview needs to know what council has approved for us in order to make the options that council is asking for now so council needs to give the direction to greenview to say 50 like whatever it be current plus 50 percent is what we want you to plan for and give us our options on that they they need to they need to know that information to move the project forward okay. yeah yeah just a, a a a comment or question uh i i i could never approve of uh storing the vehicles inside very similar to you mayor clarkson so if we approve option two we're approving uh, uh having the five trucks and the the trailer uh, located inside the building, and that would just take in, the the price of the project would would just double. I I would like to see as compact a facility for both departments as possible. Well, that's that's my feeling too, because that that uh, required you put in washrooms or well, the shared washrooms, then that space comes out of that requirement. Uh, sh kitchen should be shared. That comes out of that department. Washrooms, uh, there's a whole lot of stuff in there that could be shared. I can't see why you can't share a workbench for the amount of work that you're actually going to be doing. So I think in the reality, if you, I think the conversation has to take place between 
the roads depot and the and the uh, uh, parks as if it was one unit and find out what's the best most economical way to put the two facilities under one roof and stop thinking of each one of them as being their own their own entity because in the sharing of this comes a reduction in cost you know yes so through you greenview are quite quite prepared to prepare um, a space needs study for those two departments but simply need to know how many staff from public or from recreation and facilities council would support in the future potentially using that building so if you're saying nine if that's what council are indicating if you're indicating as well that you don't want to see any vehicles parked inside for that department then that is something that we can take back but they can't provide their opinion on how to make that building work until they know how many staff are going to work out of there they have a very good indication of the public works staff they've done that in depth and now we just need to be able to tell them if council are directing they want one building for both those departments we can certainly have greenview work on that we just need a number that you're considering would be working out of that building and i'm hearing nine potentially is that what carol yeah let me can i let me attempt to craft a motion here because sure. i think we've had the, the conversation um i'll go back to our so first of all receive the uh, uh, staff report and secondly uh, and I'll start with the same motion that council directs staff with the assistance of the consultant to go back and review other options, including shared space for parks and recreation, public works, and further that the report assess current and future growth needs. I'll add two things. One is assume that parks and, sorry, recreation facilities department will grow by 50% with your, uh, with staff needs. And secondly, uh, incorporate as many shared amenities and facilities as is reasonably possible. And number three, um, I don't know whether we want them to do a case with and without uh, indoor storage space. I think we're saying we'd like to see something without indoor storage space for vehicles unless it is necessary. Well, and if something happened that there was, you know, some big deal came through, then they would park it in the in the garage overnight or something you don't you know it's not like we're not going to have a facility there that somebody could have a vehicle in okay i think that i think that motion's pretty uh pretty to the point is everybody uh peter am i missing you or no no yeah i'd like to second that motion okay uh any other comments all in favor that motion is carried Okay there, Mr. Brockbank, have you been sitting there quietly? <laughs> yes. Through you. Um, the next item on the agenda is still in an SQ1 report. Okay, sorry, Dylan. Come back, come back. Boris, thank you, ma'am. We'll make this one quicker for us. Um, so before council is my quarterly report. Um, new to the report this year, or this, sorry, this quarter is uh, a few graphs here. We're, we're working with the new work order. Um, uh, module that we did within our mesh system that we already have. Um, this will help us track, you know, kind of where we're spending our time. You know, if there's anomalies, we can look at it why and figure out if something needs to get changed. Um, another uh, direction that we're going to go is we're going to try to less overwhelm council and the public with nitty gritty stuff in the back end of it. So we're going to start pairing that down to the, the need to know items and, and have more of the actual quantitative data for for council to look at um, and I councillor Armstrong had a, a good suggestion about sending these around to all of our all of our stakeholders such as the library and community halls and, and whatnot um, so they can see what the department does for them on a on a regular basis so if there's any questions I would be happy to answer actually there's one that I would maybe request of the mayor is regarding the earlier motion on the roadside mowing if the mayor would be uh, agreeable to meeting myself and on Matt and Matt Perkins on site potentially downtown Buckhorn to get a better understanding of where those mowing areas are. What are you doing in about an hour? <laughs> <laughs> um, at your at your convenience, Dylan. If you're going to be down around there, you give me a call. 
Okay. Love or it. we can set it up some some morning and and uh, I can I can probably between the two of us we can come up with something sooner than later. That yeah for sure absolutely that sounds good. No I appreciate that. Yes, Carol. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you for your patience with You're me You're very today. welcome. You're very welcome. <laughs> uh, Dylan, I wonder if you could just share with everybody, because I, I did note uh, on your work plan, the uh, uh, feasibility study RFP for the sports path. I wonder if you could tell us what the status of that is, if you wouldn't mind. Through you, uh, Mayor. Um, yep, yeah, so the feasibility study is posted, um, open for bids. Um, I off the top of my head, the dates are are slipping me. Um, if Anne is on board here, she might have it better in her memory with the actual dates for closing are. Um, are you there, Anne, by chance? I am, thank you. Through you, the RFP for the uh, feasibility study for the uh, sports pad closes on Wednesday, April the 28th at 10 o'clock a.m. Thank you. So through you, Mayor, following, following the closure, um, staff will do a uh, compliancy review of all of the submissions. Um, from then, the, the uh, evaluation team will evaluate the, the RFP, and at that point in time, we will write up a report and recommend to council a, um, a, someone to award the, the, the feasibility space, and then hopefully we get it underway very quickly. Uh, now I know I know Dylan, you and I have spoken with this uh, about this, and I've spoken to uh, uh, Donna and Jesse as well. But when the direction is being given to the whoever gets this, can three items be prioritized? Because if the if the washrooms cannot be accommodated, if the septic can't be accommodated, if the parking cannot be accommodated. There, this cannot move forward. It, one, any one of those three things will stop this process. So before we spend money looking at a great big bundle of stuff, can we not prioritize to the to the three things that are a no that are a no brainer? The fourth one that's in there, which probably doesn't have to be dealt with at that time, but there, it's probably going to be necessary for the BCC to give up a good portion of the ball field. If there isn't a willingness to do that. Again, the feasibility study has its has its hands tied because the necessary the the artificial ice cannot go in there without washrooms. Washrooms cannot go in there without without sewage. So the people who are accepting this this um, report need to understand that uh, Buckhorn has neither service land, water, or septic, which makes the the piece of land a lot more constricted. So I'm wondering if it can't be a little bit uh, tiered in terms of uh, of its um, in terms of its scope. It would be a shame to spend however much money on something that would be ruled out right off the bat, or or conversely, everything gets covered. It gets it gets you know good reviews and it gets moved forward, but. There are there are some deal stoppers in this thing. <clears throat> yes. Three, when, when they're doing the study, did they consider like how much water we have in uh, the well? Like I was just curious. Yeah, I think do they do I, all that. I would think they would, but there's not there's tons of water there. Yeah, that's a that's a they really good well. Who's just designing there's, something like that isn't water good. supply? Yeah. Uh, anybody else a uh, question? Through you. I think someone's trying to answer some of those questions. Dylan, are you on there? Yeah, through you, Mayor. Um, you so, go ahead. Go ahead, Dylan. Oh, sorry. Through you, thank you. Um, so through you, we we've the scope of the RFP was approved by council. Um, it sounds to me that that the that you're maybe that you're suggesting a, a change in that scope um, to do so. No, we, really, we we can't really stop. Like we can stop it, we could you know not proceed with the RFP as it is, but we would have to reissue an RFP with the given with the changes. So staff would need some direction to to take undertake that. 
I don't think it's a change of scope. I think it's a change of, like, whenever they start, you've got to start and you've got to finish somewhere. So if you start, if you're given direction under this thing to start with one, two, and three, and either one, two, or three uh, can't, be, can't be accommodated, then why would you go ahead and do the rest of it? Conversely, why would you do a whole lot of stuff only to get to the bottom of those three and find out that one of them has wasted all of that time? I don't know why that's a change. I think it's just a direction in the way you, in the, like the end result is the same. You want to have the the um, the feasibility study conducted, but the feasibility study, uh, I don't know why that can't be, why that can't be constructed to get the best information as quickly as possible. Uh, we need a five minute break here. Anybody else need a five minute break? So are we are you, are break? We or, or? Yeah, for five minutes. Okay.
Welcome back, everybody. I hope you had a nice break. <laughs> Did you have a donut? <laughs> no, who had donuts? Who had donuts? <laughs> okay, where are we at? Um, I guess we just need a motion to uh, accept this uh, RFP, do we? Is that where we're at? Yeah. Sorry, I threw you, Mayor and This is um, the uh, Q and report? recreation facilities. Q1 report. Yeah. Yes, Carol. Motion to receive. Okay. Second that. Second that. And all in favor? Carried. Okay. That's the Q1. Okay. Now we're back to Steve. Steve, you must be asleep there somewhere. I am not, Mayor, but I forget what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> so do we. <laughs> Uh, Madam Mayor, through you, Council, before you, you have my uh, report to receive um, regarding a grant application. Any questions? I'd be happy to answer any. Well, I think that's a good thing. Is there any is there any other information you want to bring us today? Like, is everything coming along? Do you need more support? Uh, I know your phone is ringing off the wall, and you're probably the only you're probably the only department here that answers your phone 24 hours a day so i think you offer i think we uh we need to give you our our dedicated thanks and uh don't know how you do it do we have anybody else that wants to make a comment here i think we should give them a fancy hat or something so we have a motion yes i will make the motion that we we approve the recommendation to apply for the grant for the safety grant of applicant. And you're going to second that? Second, yeah. Okay. Deputy Mayor Windover is our seconder. All in favor? And as I say, Steve, you have our gratitude. Anything else you want to bring forward, Steve, while we got you here? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, I appreciate your comments um, and just my first quarter report. Okay. Um, if there's any questions. Anything you want to highlight in that? Um, I think our call volume reflects Chelsea's report. Vehicles up 40%. Um, since this report information was gathered by Susan, um, we have 109 calls to date when we've done the report. We're at 140 calls as of today already. So I think uh, it speaks for itself. How are you as far as far as uh, volunteers? Are you recruiting or through you, Mayor? Um, we have hired 14 new recruits just in time for the uh, stay-at-home order to come into effect. But we, uh, because our training division took the time to do our online online training platform, um, we have the new recruits. Um, enrolled in that at the moment so we're, we're not wasting any time that way they're doing all the uh the classroom activities um via online training so that's been a that's been a help now have you got concerns about them closing the uh, the college through you madam mayor the discussion at a board of directors meetings at our regional training center on friday was that um the recruit class right now is being um, done online as well, but we're hoping that the lockdown stay-at-home order will be lifted before the practical evolutions need to be um, carried out. So um, stay tuned for more information on that. Okay. All right. Have we got a motion for this report to, to uh, receive this report? Deputy Mayor Windover? Uh, <laughs> Terry, Terry, Terry. Pardon? <laughs> Councillor Lamb's head. <laughs> All in favor. And that is carried. Allison Martin, Planning Administrator, Consent Application, Creation of a Right of Way. Thank you. Through you, Madam Mayor. On today's agenda is a municipal appraisal form for consent file B4820 by owner Henna Karaj. The subject land is located at 5 Main Street. This is an application for a right-of-way that will be located between 5 Main Street and 4 Main Street. 
The application conforms to official plan policies and zoning bylaw provisions. Staff have reviewed the application and recommend that council approves it. Thank okay. you. Do we have a motion? Okay, Councillor Lanshead. Motion to approve that. Okay. That makes sense. Councillor Armstrong. <laughs> Seconds. <laughs> I'm tired of caring about <laughs> My mind's gone. I, I apologize. The mind's gone. All in favor. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> this is terrible. Allison, I've got your name in front of me. I can't, I can't miss you. Uh, a, a report for the county official plan project status report. Thank you. Through you, Madam Mayor, staff are recommending that council receive this report from the planning administrator for information regarding the county official plan project status. Okay. Can we have a motion to receive this report? Uh, Deputy Mayor Windover. Uh, you, have you a comment, Carol? I'll second and, uh, and a question, okay. if I may. Uh, seconded um, by... And, uh, Allison, this is probably uh, as much... Sorry, to you, Madam Mayor. Um, this is probably a question for Adele as much as you, but um, I'm relatively new to this, but and I appreciate that it's a lot, it's very difficult and complex to merge the municipal official plans, and I think there's six or seven of them, with the county official plan. I get that. Um, we're now in our fourth year of doing that. So I have two questions. One is what's the um, planned completion date? of that new integrated official plan? And secondly, will we still be required to update that every five years? Go ahead, Allison. Through you, Madam Mayor. Through you, Madam Mayor, I can answer that. Um, okay. We're getting closer to the end because we've been in our fourth year on this project. And um, I would anticipate that we're looking into next year to have it finally completed because we do have to have a public meeting and some consultation after we have a draft. And um, in terms of going forward, I think that once we have the official plan done, there is a five-year period in which we need to review. And currently we're looking at a housing strategy or um, timelines that the County of Peterborough is looking at for our housing needs and how it could be distributed throughout the county. And that was one of the questions that was raised by council earlier this afternoon. So that's something that the county um, with the area municipalities is going to be working on very shortly. Great. Thank you. Okay. So that, you were the seconder, right? With a second. question. Uh, all in favor? And that motion is carried. Okay, Adele, uh, building and planning report. Through you, Madam Mayor, this is the building and planning first quarter report. And um, if you look at the numbers that are included in the report, we are extremely busy and continue to work at the backlog of applications we have. Um, we have our online cloud permit system up and running. And I think as we proceed into the future, I think it'll provide some very good benefits uh, to the staff and having things done in a timely manner. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Is that um is there quite a learning curve to that cloud? Through Madam Mayor, it's um our staff have been trained since uh, last December on how the system is working. And I think once you enter one permit, um, you just have to repeat that process. And it's good for the public because they can access um, the cloud permitting system to find out if there's any deficiencies upon their review of their application. So everything's done electronically. And I think there's a great cost saving and time saving benefit to that process. So it's not really complicated. So then Adele, with with the um, the questions that we've had the last couple of days about what this uh, restaurant in Buckhorn is trying to do, can they go on the cloud and do some of this themselves? Or is this more complicated than that? Through Madam Mayor, the cloud permitting system is only if you have an application in, 
contract to the building okay. division for building, construction, or demolition. So it's an actual permitting system. What you're okay. referring to, to the Buckhorn um, new proposed development, uh, we are assisting them and trying to get them into the right direction on what's required prior to them prior to them submitting a renovation permit for that building. So the cloud then is, uh, the cloud is more, uh, once a person's got every, all their ducks in a row, the cloud allows them to go in and see what the progression is as opposed to calling staff every other day and seeing what my, what my uh, status is. Is it that kind of thing? That's correct. Okay. Okay. All right. So are you are you complete on that? Have we got somebody with a question here or yes, Carol? Uh, a comment and a question. Just in following this theme of observations, um, just like fire and uh, transfer stations, building permits are up 40% year over year, and the Committee of Adjustments has handled 50% more for um, things. So clearly our staff is getting uh, increased pressure on, on in terms of volumes. Um, so thank you for working your way through that. I do have a question because it's on your work plan, and that is, I wonder what the status of the uh, Dudney Mountain uh, quarry application is uh, since council sent back to them a request for additional information. Through you, Madam Mayor, uh, planning staff have received additional information from the planning consultants. However, um, our external planning consultant, Chris Jones and myself have decided that it would be in the best interest if the planners had a meeting to discuss what was before us. And we've reached out to their planning consultant, Gord Russell, and I'm just waiting for a confirmation on a meeting that we have uh, set aside for tomorrow morning. So I'm waiting to hear if that meeting is going to be a go or not, but I anticipate if that time and date doesn't work that we should have a meeting within the next week and then we can come back to council. Great. Okay. Thank you. Yep. All right. And I would make a motion to receive. Thank you. And do we have a seconder there? Okay. Councillor Lambshead, all in favor. And that motion is carried. Donna. Yes. Finally, Donna. Right. So through you, um, my first uh, report or overview relates to the overall tax rate, which we now have as the county has officially passed theirs. So um, the first slide really just indicates the amount of money that will be collected from our rate payers, which is over $23 million. Uh, that is how it's apportioned. And you will see uh, the county portion, actually the municipality pays 18.28% of the overall lower tier amount. So the next slide is the percentage breakdown. So out of every dollar collected, the municipality keeps 44 cents, 38 cents to the county and 18 cents for education. The next slide shows the effect of, of $100,000 worth of assessment when you include all three levels. So it would be an increase of $9.70. And just for your information, out of that $9.70, actually $7.20 of that is related to the county. Their rate went up quite a bit more than ours this year. So their actual tax rate went up 2.18% and ours was 0.64. So that increase largely rate relates to the county this year. So the effect to the next slide on the average homeowner is about a $54.74 increase. And that's based on the MPAC assessment for 2021 of 401,000, just over that. So that would be what the average rate payer would see as an increase based on that assessed value. And once again, the final slide just shows you the breakdown of the county levy between the lower tiers. I'm happy to answer any questions. Do I see a hand? Do I see anybody with the checkbook? <laughs> <laughs> okay, do we have a motion to receive that report? And again, well done, well done, Donna. Uh, it's uh, Councillor Lambshead and Deputy Mayor Windover, and all in favor, that uh, motion is carried. 
now finance um, 2021 Q1 report. So through you, uh, finance report for council's information. And once again, I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, motion to receive. Councillor Armstrong, seconded by. Where's, where's Councillor Franzen in there? There we go. Yes. With my All hand up. Favor? I see you. All in favor? Motion is has carried. Did you have another one there, Donna, that I missed? I think that's it, eh? Through you, that's it for finance. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Lynn, are you there for economic development? Yes, I am. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon, Madam, uh, Madam Mayor and members of Council. Speaking through you, Madam, Madam Mayor, um, you have before you the first quarter report with a summary of activities of the Economic Development Officer for your information. The recommendation is to receive the report for information. Uh, I would be pleased to answer any questions that you may have to the best of my knowledge. Do we have any questions for Lynn? I had a compliment, uh, the people who are trying to get that new restaurant in Buckhorn, he's been dealing with you and he's extremely impressed. So I said, I would pass that on. Thank you very much. I'm well, glad I made a good impression. You made a good impression. I don't know whether you solved his problems or not, but you made a good impression. <laughs> We're gonna get there. Uh, yeah. No, the other one. Um, okay. Um, Motion to approve or receive. Councillor Lambshead, new, Deputy new Mayor Windover. Main Street too, uh, that one I don't know about. Yeah, change over, yeah. yeah. All in favor? Carried. Uh, Donna, accounts payable. Yes, so through you, accounts uh, payable for the month of March. Okay. Um, do we have a motion to approve? Councillor Armstrong. Seconder. Oh, there he is, Councillor Franzen. All in favor, and that is carried. Now, surplus property report. I think I think a couple of us have questions on this. <laughs> Terry, would you like to go first? Well, sure, through you. I, I, I'm thinking what I was thought we were going to be getting was a small list of surplus properties that could be saleable. And we got a, an entire list of everything I think we own. So I, I don't know if we could refer this back to staff to, to you know, it down. pick a few properties that are reasonable to be saleable, but you know, I'd also would like a little bit of input from both the Parks and Recreation and Culture Advisory Committee and Economic Development Committee, just to make sure that we are not getting rid of a piece of property that is better kept. Right. But at the same time, a sketch so that we can go out and actually look at these properties and, and get a feel ourselves. And I think the other suggestion was that when it comes to selling them, you get at least two real estate people to uh, to give up a, a, a pricing on us so that we come somewhere in the somewhere in the market. The couple of times that we've done this before, that's what we had. We had a well almost like this plan that we've got in front of us here. So you could go and see what it actually looked like and so we had a half a dozen, you know, I know half a dozen probably is not, maybe not something you want to look at right now, but I think it's, I think it's necessary for us to be pared down. So do we have a seconder yeah. for that motion or you didn't, it hasn't made a motion yet. Oh, no. just a comment. Yeah. Yes, Carol. I, I will make the motion to direct staff to go back and uh, relook at this list and come back with a, uh, a list of potentially saleable yeah. uh, properties uh, mm -hmm. with comments and, and details. Uh, I, I just want to say that I had sorted that list. There, all, there looked to be about 29 properties that were not medical centers, facilities, et cetera. So the pool of possible ones is about 29, if that helps mm -hmm. uh, council just to get a, a sense of the ballpark numbers. Well, real estate is high right now. <clears throat> Might as well take advantage of some of this. Uh, okay, so you're going to make the motion, Carol? Yes. Okay, can we have a seconder for that motion? Uh, Councillor Lambshead, all in favor? And that motion is carried. 
yes, Donna. Sorry, through you, I would just like to clarify, you've mentioned the EDAC and the PRCAC. So for staff to bring it back a list, would you like that conversation? Because I know the PRCAC group are looking at use of surplus properties potentially. So is that something you want us to bring back separate from that? I think that I think we're making it very, I think we're making it very complicated. There's enough land there that says it could be a boat ramp or it could be a park. And I think those are not the things you're gonna put in there. So I would I would have you look at that in terms of, you know, what we know at this point to be surplus. I think if we let everybody dive into this thing, we're gonna be we're gonna be doing this in August. Okay, just wanted to clarify. Thank you. Okay. Um we have another one here, uh, work plans. <clears throat> right through you. Uh, just a report on the work plan updates for all of the individual departments and the reports and policies presented to council by administration in Q1. Anybody questions on any of these reports or can we have a uh, motion? Oh, there he is. Hello there, Councillor Franson. Are you yep. making a motion with a comment? Uh, or yeah, just... just a motion. Okay. To receive. To receive. Uh, seconder, Deputy Mayor Wendover, all in favor? Motion is carried. <laughs> Corporate services, Ann Ruth, where are you? For you, Mayor Clarkson. Uh, this report brings forward council expenses submitted for the month of March and the remainder of February 2021 for council's consideration and approval. Thank you. Okay, can we have a motion, please? Approved. Okay, Councillor Lambshead, seconded by. Mayor Windover, all in favor? Motion is carried. Jesse, Corporate Services. Hey, Mayor Clarkson, we're on item 10.7.2, which is still Anne with the award of Peterborough County Joint Tender. Okay, this is a good one. All right, can we have a motion, please? Okay, uh, Councillor Franzen and Councillor Lambshead. All in favor? Motion is carried. Correspondence for information. Does any, yes. Through you, the next item is 10.7.3, which is the Corporate Services Q1 report. Okay, and that would be you. And I just left you out. I apologize for that. that. That's okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, this report just um, outlines the outstanding resolutions, uh, council resolutions, as well as uh, work completed in 2021 Q1. I would just like to highlight one initiative from the Corporate Services Department that was initiated and assisted with through the Deputy Clerk, and that was uh, the um, coordinating of secondary school students to do the closed captioning work for the recording of the council meetings. Um, and these are students that are working towards their 40 hours of community service. Good. Okay. The motion to... Yes. Motion to receive. Motion to receive. And Councillor Lambshead is our seconder. All in favor? Motion has carried. Now we can do this correspondence for information. Does anybody want to pull any of these out? Motion to receive. Okay, uh, do we have a seconder? Councillor Armstrong, all in favor. That was motioned was by uh, Councillor Franzen. And motion is carried. Correspondence for action. First one being support for a three digit suicide crisis prevention hotline. Through you, the first item is 12.1, City of Kitchener, regarding planning acts timelines. I'm sorry. All right. Uh, so you've got this in front of you, planning act timelines. This is already, Don, is this not already in legislation, the timelines? These are not a timeline that people are expected to, or is that individual townships that put that in there? Or? Through you, I'm not aware myself. It's a planning. Perhaps Adele would know better. 
correct? This because I thought that there was a time, like if a person applies for a permit, I thought there was a, a there is, isn't there, Terry? Mm -hmm. I think Adele can speak to this, but I think the, the timelines that we're talking about are for a complete application being presented for a building permit. You only have 10 days to either issue the permit or find some other method. These Adele, are official are you there? plan amendments. Yes, I am through you, Madam Mayor. This has to do with planning application approvals. And I think what they're trying to look at is to extend some of those timelines. Um, there is legislation in place, but I believe they want uh, the province to take another look at these timelines. Um, during this COVID period, we're finding some difficulty in meeting these timelines. Okay, do we have a, do we have a motion? Do you support it? Do you want to support it? Sure. Okay, uh, Deputy Mayor Windover, do we have a seconder? Councillor Lambshead, are you seconding it? Or? Yes, I'll second that. Yes. Okay, all in favor? And that motion is carried. Now we've got support for a three digit suicide and crisis provincial hotline. A motion. Councillor Lambshead? I would like to support that. Yeah, me too. We are in very stressful times. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Councillor uh, Lambshead and Deputy Mayor Windover, all in favor? And that motion is carried. The Palm Youth Resident Closure. Do we have a motion? Carol? Motion to receive. Okay, uh, motion to receive. And do we have a seconder for that? Um, Councillor Lambshead, all in favor? Township of Hudson, support for fire departments. Motion. Councillor Lambshead? I would like to support that. Support. And Deputy Mayor Windover, our, our seconder. And that motion is carried. Township of Muskoka Lakes. Is it you if you just call for the vote before sending the outcome. Oh, okay. Did I not do that? I did not do that. Okay, call for the vote. All in favor? And that motion is carried. Okay, Township of Muskoka Lakes, Decibel Coalition. Motion to receive. Thank you. And a seconder for that is Councillor Armstrong. All in favor? That has carried. Township of Autonomy South Monaghan, deadline extension for development of required submissions for OPP Detachment Board. And Donna, that's what you're going to speak yeah. to. Thank you, through you. So as Mayor Clarkson indicated, there was a change under the Community Safety and Policing Act that was passed in 2019. And under that new act, the current Police Services Board for the lower tier municipalities uh, will be eliminated. Instead, there'll be a new board created that is an OPP detachment board. So the municipality has been working with the other lower tiers. There is a deadline of June 7th uh, for a submission to, to the Solicitor General's office on what uh, we would like to see in that regard jointly. So um, we have to submit one submission for all of the lower tiers and potentially the two First Nations. And uh, yeah, we would be looking at under this new board, there is a 60% representation for municipalities, 20% for the province and 20% for the community. So it is quite a change. And we are just, this resolution is to give us a little more time in order to implement or to provide feedback on what uh, we would like to see for the area. And from my standpoint, being a representative on police services and has been for some time i am not even a little bit in favor of this so uh, obviously it's going to be the majority rule but as i said to to chris i would like to see a clear uh, direction given to us as where we're going to benefit from this and he hasn't been able to do that and nobody else has been able to do that either is this a done deal probably but we are, to all intents and purposes, we're going to have one member, um, um, Smith, Dave Smith, our MP, MPP, is going to appoint one of them, and that's pretty much it. We're going to be, we're going to have a, a provincial appointment in ourselves. So we'll be attending a meeting a month. Um, my concern is somebody as rural as us that has the problems we have are going to get swallowed up by Selwyn Township and some of the more 
some of the more developed ones. They've already taken the lead on this. So can we do anything about it? Probably not. But I, for one, will not be, uh, won't be voting for this. So I guess the motion to ask for this is to receive until we get enough information that we can either support it or... Yes, Carol? I think, Madam Mayor, that the motion is to request an extension of the deadline to submit our, um, uh, whatever it is, our, our recommendations around this. So it's not for or against the um, change in structure. It's simply a motion that we would bring forward to uh, request an extension of the deadline date from June 7th to September 1st, which I, I would make yeah. a motion to support. Yeah, maybe yes or maybe no. <laughs> I, I certainly second that motion. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? And that is carried. Okay, bylaws on the agenda. Yes, E. Yes, thank you. Through you, there are several bylaws on today's agenda that didn't have a corresponding uh, staff report or a public meeting. The first is B202152, which is a zoning bylaw amendment for file 2104. Uh, the public meeting was held April 6th and was supported by council. The second one is B202153, which is the housekeeping bylaw amendment. Again, the public meeting was held on April 6th and was supported by council. B202156 is the zoning bylaw amendment for file 2027, Murphy. The public meeting was held April 6th, 6th and council supported the drafting of the zoning bylaw to authorize the proposed replacement dwelling and to preclude the proposed storage building. And B202158 is a bylaw to authorize the execution of a merger agreement for severance file B6220, which was a condition of their severance approval. Now, do we need a motion for each of these or can we do them all together? If you would like to do them all together, you can do that. But I believe there was one uh, bylaw of contention, which was uh, B202056 Murphy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so can we have one? Now that's the that's the housekeeping one, right? No, no you know, that was a zoning bylaw amendment for Murphy. Okay, okay, I got it. Today. Okay, so for the other group, do we have a motion to approve that group? Yeah, the other one. Okay, Deputy Mayor Windover, unless somebody wants to debate one of these, and I don't imagine you do. Uh, seconder would be Councillor Lambshead, all in favor? So you said Murphy's the one we pull out? Through you, yes. Uh, B202156 was the zoning bylaw amendment for Murphy. Council um, had uh, supported the drafting of the zoning bylaw <clears throat> as it is on the agenda. However, after hearing from Mr. Murphy today, it seems that council is inclined to defer this application. Um, I would suggest if there is a deferral that it would potentially suggest that uh, staff draft the bylaw uh, to authorize the boathouse structure. Okay, have we got a, a motion for that? Councillor Lambshead? We'll make that a motion with an explanation. Okay, do you want to do your explanation yeah. now? Yeah. The Mr. Murphy tried very hard to speak at our last meeting and was unable to speak in his defense or provide information. He attempted a couple of times. I did actually see his image on the screen. So I had questions of him that I wasn't un unable to ask. So I think it might have slightly changed the outcome of our decision. So I, I felt it was wrong that he didn't get it. So I have no issues revisiting this. Okay. And uh, Ron, you're going to second that. Uh, Deputy Mayor Window, we're seconder. And all. Okay. Through you, Madam Mayor. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, before you I make mean, the I'm vote, does <laughs> this mean that council is not supportive of a public meeting to deal with the proposed boathouse? So, oh, in well. that regards, if we're recommending a public meeting be held, then we shouldn't be approving a zoning bylaw until it's done. Okay. Is it necessary to have the public meeting? Yeah, I think so. Through you, Madam Mayor, I was only recommending a public meeting as if people had watched or saw um, Council's um, minutes of the meeting to show that what the support was or what wasn't the support. There's a bylaw in here. Now Council is um, changing 
the recommendation or changing the bylaw, I just thought it would be a good opportunity to provide the public with an opportunity if someone wanted to speak to it. Yes. Okay, yes. Councillor Lambshead, do you I, want to change I, I that think, a little bit? No, I think that's what my motion really was, was to defer a decision on that yeah. until we can have another public meeting to discuss any changes that I, I, I feel that some other councillors are also concerned that that may have changed the outcome. So I would rewrite the zoning bylaw amendment to, that we can vote on again. Okay, so then we are having this the uh, yes, public I, meeting I think and it's then necessary follow that. Be, it's necessary because people have yeah, viewed this and right. we made a decision without all the information we yeah. could have had. So. Just a paper trail. Mm -hmm. a second. Okay, yeah. and uh, all in favor of that. That's a good, uh, that's a good second, uh, what do you call it, sober second thought. Uh, fire safety grant transfer payment agreement. Motion? No? Yeah. Mayor Flexen, I was under the impression with the first motion that we approved I bought all bylaws with the exception of B2021-50. Okay, so this one's part of that? The fire agreement is part of that yeah. package? Yeah, all bylaws. Yeah. Okay, merger agreement. Uh, yeah. Okay, business arising out of a previous meeting. Have we got anything here we want to discuss? Notices of motion. Councillor Armstrong. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I did read this at the last uh, meeting, um, but I will test my reading skills again. <laughs> um, so it shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. Um, and it's regarding roadside cleanup uh, waste. So whereas there are inconsiderate people who thoughtlessly toss garbage, litter, and rubbish on our roadsides, and whereas roadside litter pickup is not a regular service provided by the municipality or the county, and whereas roadside litter is a blight on the natural landscape and is detrimental to the environment as well as wildlife, whereas many of our residents are conscientious and committed to organizing cleanups, and whereas the municipality and the county are not able to endorse a community cleanup event given uh, the current COVID-19 restrictions understood, and whereas several community associations are planning a roadside cleanup event for this uh, Saturday or Sunday, which is on Earth Week, uh, therefore council directs staff to accept recycling and waste from these events on April 24th and 25th without penalizing the participants by marking their bag tags or changing a fee. Now, have you put anything in there about them being clear, clear bag? And I have not, but all the instructions to and uh, sorted. associations have said it must be sorted into the three. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Motion. Councillor Lambshead. I will second that. All right. <coughs> Deputy Mayor Windover, you're going to. Oh, you okay? You made the motion. Okay. You're going to second it. Yeah. <coughs> all in favor, and that is carried. Do we have any other notices of motion? I've got one that I'm presenting at the county tomorrow, but that's not this one. <coughs> Lays on reports for external boards. Do we have anybody who wants to add something to this agenda? Uh, oh, sorry, Dan. <coughs> I have something to add, Janet, Ms. Clarkson. Uh, I, I, I got a call from Pete Clarkson uh, to present at uh, the BCC this morning about uh, if uh, the BCC would enter an agreement with the township to take a part of the ball field or the whole ball field, depending on what what's needed uh, for the ice pad. And uh, they said that they would uh, like to wait till the, we get the report from the consultant. Okay, I told them that. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Francis. Anybody else a report? Any other information items? Now, we have to go into a closed meeting and uh, it's to discuss personnel matters about an identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees. Anyone that is listening or viewing the electronic meeting may remain on the line for when council oh. rises from closed session. We need a motion to go into closed. Deputy Mayor Windover, uh, Councillor Franson, all in favor, and that motion has carried. <clears throat> now you will all be.
Okay. Um, we're going to get a motion to rise from closed. And that's going to be, Peter, they've moved you again. They moved me. They moved you. Okay. <laughs> uh, motion by Peter and seconded by Councillor Armstrong. And all in favor? Motion is carried. Minutes arising from the closed meeting. We're going to adopt the meetings, the regular close from 6 and the 13th. <laughs> Councillor Friends, uh, Councillor Lambshead, sorry. Deputy Mayor Windover, all in favor? And that has carried. For all motions coming out of the closed meeting. Yes. I would like to make a motion that we appoint Jasmine Roach to the Parks, Recreation and Culture Advisory Committee. Okay, okay. Uh, and the seconder uh, is Councillor uh, Deputy Mayor Windover. All in favor? Motion is carried. Now, adoption of confirming bylaw is uh, we need an, appro uh, <clears throat> an approval for it would be Councillor Armstrong, uh, Councillor Lambshead. All in favor? Now we need that motion to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> Deputy Mayor Windover just had a had a uh, whiplash. Reflection. <laughs> and it's seconded by Carol mm -hmm. and Terry and Peter and me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, folks. Well done. We can just call for the vote and state the outcome. Oh, I called for the vote and they all were in favor. <clears throat>